And good evening, everyone, and welcome to Alamo Stadium for tonight's high school football showcase presented by John Wayne Service Company. I'm Bobby Stotzenberg along with Andy Skelton. We got a good one for you, folks. We are very excited about this one. The 47th time that the Holy Bowl has been played as Holy Cross and Central Catholic will collide here tonight at Alamo Stadium, and they haven't played in five years. And, Andy, this is such a great rivalry. Both of these schools are real excited about playing this again, and it's about time. Yeah, I'll tell you what, and this is a non-district ball game, Bobby, but throw all that out the window. We are rekindling a great, intense rivalry, uh, and you bet both these teams are going to come out and they're going to fight tonight. All right, for Coach uh, Mike Santiago from Central Catholic, this is his first go-around in a Holy Bowl. Okay, thanks, Bob. I've got Coach Santiago here. Coach, your first your first Holy Bowl coach. Talk about how things are at Central Catholic as you head to this matchup with Holy Cross. Things are really quiet at Central Catholic uh, today. Nobody was there except the football team, but uh, this week's been wild. It's been it's really been like a bowl week for these kids. Uh, we've, we've done a lot of things, and, and it's been really fun. I'm, I'm looking forward to a great football game tonight. Coach, what are a few keys to victory for Central Catholic? Protect the football. Protect the football. Protect the football. Uh, Coach, you got a couple of great offensive players. A guy that caught my eye last week, Gibby Garza, talk about your junior slot back. Gibby Garza is a guy that uh, was on the sideline last year playing, you know, backing up David Meyer, and I, and I didn't know how smart I was, you know, because I had him on the sideline. This year we put him to our F position. He moves around for us. We're getting him the ball every way we can. Coach, best of luck. Hey, thanks. But for Coach Mike Harrison of the Holy Cross Knights, he's been there including winning the last three that he coached in. Coach, how are the Knights coming into the game tonight? Very excited, uh, a lot of enthusiasm. Kids have been looking forward to this all week. Uh, probably that's a lie, more like all year. Uh, it's been one of those moments that when you have a hiatus like that, having it renewed, a rivalry like this, it's going to be very exciting. Kids are excited, fans are excited. It's going to be a great, great time tonight. Coach, what are some keys for the Holy Cross Nets tonight? Well, first of all, we're going to have to execute offensively. We failed a lot last week in key situations, both offensively and defensively, to do the things we needed to do that were really, really crucial. Uh, especially down uh, crunch time, we've, we've, we've got to do better at execution. One, we're going to have to control the tempo of the game, the flow of the game. Uh, we cannot give them too many chances. They're very explosive. they got some real, real talent. On Folks, it's going to be exciting here at Alamo Stadium. We invite you to stick around. It's the 47th Holy Bowl as the Holy Cross Knights take on the Central Catholic Buns. It's the high school football showcase presented by John Wayne Service Company on KCWX-TV. Back at Alamo Stadium as we get set for the Holy Bowl, and we've got a couple of key players here. Let's start with Holy Cross and their offense. 
Tell you what, we've got Junior Gib- Gibby Silas. He's coming in at quarterback. He's going to have to be sure he's going to handle this pressure of the big game atmosphere tonight, Bobby. And a lot of two-way players, but on the defensive side, uh, it's a big game as well for this strong side linebacker. Yeah, he's going to be he's going to be challenged on the edge tonight for sure, coming in for the center Catholic. And the defensive back, Augustine Barrera, will play a key role in that as well. For the uh, Central Catholic Buttons, let's take a look at some of their impact players on the offensive side. Hilario Gomez tonight, I mean, he's the That's biggest. The defensive side. Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> he's going to play his butt off on defense too. All right, let's take a look at the uh, impact player on the offensive side, and that, of course, is the guy they want to get the ball to. Yeah, he's going to be the big player tonight. Give him the ball, give him the ball, give him the ball. That's their game plan tonight, Bobby. Uh, several Gibbies in this one, including <laughs> Gibby Garza from Central Catholic. Folks. Stick around. The kickoff and the keys to victory are just around the corner. We're live at Alamo Stadium with the high school football showcase presented by John Wayne Service Company on KCWX-TV. That is local celebrity Dr. Patsy Torres with our national anthem. As the visitor, Holy Cross Knights, they're the underdog coming in this, into this one. The smaller team as we take a look at the Knights. Keys to victory here tonight. You have to be able, Bobby, tonight run the ball effectively between the tackles in order to control the tempo of the game. Talking to Coach Harrison today. And the secondary is going to have to challenge all routes and make sure that they're on, on time getting to those routes to shut down the passing game. Certainly Nick Chavez, a great quarterback, is going to be a challenge for the uh, Holy Cross Knight defensive secondary in particular. All right, let's uh, join on the sideline now. Our sideline reporter Gabe Farias has the keys to victory, brought to you by Kalig Auto Group. Yeah, on the sideline uh, for the Central Catholic Buttons. Yeah, for the Central Catholic Buttons, Bobby, this is a rivalry game, and keeping your composure, keeping it under control is going to be big for these guys. And at quarterback Nick Chavez, he needs to have a big game for the Buttons, and they've got to. It's imperative they control the offense and defensive lines of scrimmage. You've got both big physical guys. They've got to control that line of scrimmage, guys. Back to you. All right. The uh, prayer is taking place right now, as it's a tradition in the uh, TAPS schools prior to the game. And uh, just a beautiful but warm night here tonight at uh, Alamo Stadium as uh, the game time temperature here, 84 degrees. But that's just part of the story, Andy. 66% humidity. We do have a 60% chance of rain. 
Last night, the uh, rain and lightning, as you well know, uh, did uh, affect the play. We have winds out of the north at six miles an hour. I'm sure Gabe would like that to pick up a little bit more to cool him off down there. But it is very humid. Let's go back down to Gabe. Gabe, you have a, an idea, as you as our fans watch here, just how humid and tough it is down there for these kids. Oh, yeah, guys. I'm sweating profusely. Like, if you had a shot on me right now, it's sweat covered in sweat. But you know what? <laughs> These are young kids. These guys are ready to go. One of the things that I, I am noticing is there's a level of intense here on the sideline of the Central Catholic bunch that I just haven't seen in a while. These kids know and understand this is the first time in half a decade they've met, and they are most certainly excited. So a sweaty Gabe Farias, back to you. <laughs> Better him. Than, well, I'll tell you what. I, don't, I would normally feel sorry for him a little bit, but we also are in a, the hot box tonight because – the AC is out in the uh, press box where we're at. So we're sweating it up here, Gabe. So never fear, buddy. You're not alone out there. Central Catholic has won the toss, and they have elected uh, to receive here tonight as the uh, buttons are dressed in their home uniforms. They went to the white helmets this year, and I like the new look uh, from Coach Mike Santiago. They always had that uh, that navy helmet that matched the jerseys. They went navy all the way, pants, jerseys, and helmets, but – they switched it up a little bit here this year. Yeah, they just went with the polar opposite. It does look sharp. It has a little pop to it, uh, especially when they're wearing those white pants like that. It really, really pops. You notice the Holy Cross came out with special jerseys for tonight too, Bobby. They did. They uh, wore the green numbers as uh, Zach Davidsmeyer and uh, Gibby Garza are back deep to receive the kickoff. And teeing it up for the Holy Cross Knights is kicker Rudy Flores. Beautiful night here at Alamo Stadium. I am excited to be here. They're, they're still lined up, by the way. We can look out the back window or the back door of our press box. They're lined up all the way to uh, Toledo Street trying to get into this stadium. So the crowd will build as the game goes along. As Flores boots this one deep, and it's going to be taken by Garza along the right sideline at the five-yard line. He'll return it out till close to the 20. Good coverage there by the uh, Knights on uh, special teams as we take a look now at the starting lineups for the Central Catholic offense. Big up front there, Boldine, Alleman, Cantu, Mendez, and Holm across the front line for the uh, Buttons. In the backfield, you got Hernandez Chavez, the quarterback, and Davidsmeyer. The rest of that offense, the receivers, Garza, Gomez, Tarabla, and Karam as they, they go I formation on first down. And they will hand it off to the uh, tailback and nothing doing there. Maybe a yard just across the 20-yard line and a gain of two as we take a look now at the starting defense for the uh, Holy Cross Knights. There's their front line. Alvarado, Orta, Jr., and Rivas. Then the uh, the linebacking core, Alvarez, Gomez, Kalijah Michael, two-way guy, and Jeremy Gonzalez. We'll get to the uh, secondary in just a moment as Central's going to throw on second down. Close coverage. No flag as the pass was intended for Karam there. Close coverage by the Knights secondary as we take a look at them. And we said they had to have a big game, Andy, and that was a nice play by the corner on the near side, Adam De La Garza. Yeah, De La Garza that time, Bobby, he was on time, and that was one of their keys to victory. Their secondary is going to have to challenge the routes, and they're going to have to be on time to shut down this big high-powered passing attack by the Central Catholic Buttons tonight. The Holy Bowl, ladies and gentlemen, Holy Cross and Central Catholic, first time these two have met since uh, in five seasons. Their first meeting was way back in 1963 as Chavez will go shotgun now, Holy Cross showing blitz. And they'll run a toss left, a uh, conservative play call there, and it's blown up for a loss. There's a flag on the play as well as they uh, tried to run the uh, toss sweep to Davidsmeyer and great pursuit by the night defense. I tell you what, looking at A.J. Barrera right here running inside out, number 15, does a great job avoiding blocks and inside out, finishes the tackle right here with some authority about himself. You, you don't think these guys are fired up to play, Bobby? Right there, is, that's a testament to the excitement of this ball game. They were so uh, fired up they came off early as uh, offsides is the indication. So that essentially was a free play there for the Central Catholic Buttons as the Buttons move right to left 
as you look to your monitors. Just underway here from Alamo Stadium. Bobby Stonsmugger, Andy Skelton, and Gabe Farias, your primetime crew, looking on. Every time we come to this stadium, don't you just feel the presence of the history? The stadium was built in 1940. A lot of ball games been played here. Chavez will throw on third and short. He'll scramble to his left. He'll look down the field, and he throws in coverage in a diving attempt. But is broken up. There's a late flag on the play. Garza was the intended target, and they threw the flag right where the coverage was. I don't know if they're going to get A.J. Barrera here for getting there a little bit early. Let's look at the replay right here. Pretty good coverage it looked like, but to see when the ball shows up and when Barrera number 15 for Holy Cross shows up here. The back judge is the one that threw. He might have got the, I don't know. That was very, very close. I thought it was pretty good coverage there by Barrera. He is a big defensive back, Andy. 6'2", 211 pounds. Yeah, he's a solid presence back there. He's a 10 central at the button's 36. Secondary so far has been holding up against Central Cal. They got, you know, that's just a, a penalty right there. Referee uh, perception on that was an interference, but it looked looked like pretty solid coverage to me on that. So the Buttons get a new set of downs. They start at the 36 here as they go pistol formation. Chavez with Davids Meyer behind him. He'll give it to Davids Meyer. He's hit in the backfield and good penetration there by Orta for Holy Cross. And now a a flag on the sideline right in front of the Central Catholic bench. Well, that was a great play by order that time before the penalty flag came out. He does a great job slanting across the front, penetrating, getting in the backfield, and stopping him. But there's intensity right here. I don't know what the flag is exactly going to be on right here. The referees are conferring here at midfield. But anyways, both teams are playing lights out, and, and emotions are down there and intensity. Let's see, they're trying to sort it out here. Well, that was one of the things. It's just the intensity of the moment. Gabe, you talked about it in the pregame, just the rivalry aspect. And, and right now, Central's been the team that has uh, kept their composure. Yeah, they are, Gabe. You're right. Physical, and this is going to be fun to watch all night long. I'll tell you what, it's, it, that was two penalties that time against uh, the Holy Cross Knights. They're playing lights out, but they're going to have to throttle back just enough to stay, you know, and they're, they're talking to the umpire there. These kids are wanting to play hard, you know, and, and it's a David versus a Goliath kind of thing, and they're playing lights out, but they're going to have to play with some composure. But you're absolutely right, Gabe. Several uh, first downs here for Central Catholic due to uh, penalties from Holy Cross, and the buttons are all the way down to the 30-yard line, 35, as they're going to throw out in the flat. This one is caught, and inside the 30 to the 28, and the guy they had talked about getting the ball to was Gibby Garza. Find ways to get him the football. They got it to him there. Yeah, they just outflanked him here. They're going to throw a little little bubble route outside and make him chase, and the inside linebacker chase. And we have another late flag on the play after the play here, Bobby, so referees are trying to get control of whatever they think they're getting in control of here. Let's look. Gabe, what did you see down on the sideline? This one's against Central. Yeah. Hey, guys, I got something. All right, we're having a little trouble with our referee, Mike. We apologize. I think there's a – there's a, a – it's a little bit hot coming into our mixer, and that's part of the problem. So we try to adjust that as Gabe has something on the sidelines. Gabe? All right. All right, so uh, – We've got the penalties out of the way, hopefully. Yeah. Got the nerves and the emotion of the game. Both teams got penalized here. Now uh, second down and 19 after that penalty as Chavez takes the shotgun snap. The backs run into each other, and Davidsmeyer is stopped at the line of scrimmage and flags everywhere. And All right, they didn't have enough on the 
They didn't have enough on the line of scrimmage here, Bobby, so that backs them up another five. I think the nerves, Gabe, as you said uh, in the pregame, the nerves are pretty high right now for both of these teams. Well, and I'll tell you who also the nerves I'm fairly are high for in this game are the referees. And I didn't even know until I talked to the guys before the game, this is the same crew that did last week's Brennan and Reagan game. When I when I asked him for the for the TV timeout information, they kind of looked at me small and said, we were the guys that did it last week. So uh, this is their second game as well. But you're right, tension is very high on both sides of the field. This is a fun one. I'm excited. All right, now second and 24 and a timeout taken by Central Catholic. We'll take a break. And we will be back with more of the high school football showcase presented by John Wayne Service Company on KCWX-TV. Back at Alamo Stadium, it's been a penalty fest early on here as we welcome you back. First drive of the game. It's It's been adventurous, to say the least, Andy, and uh, both of these teams just need to settle down and play football. Well, they haven't played in, in, in several years here, so it's, you know, it, it's showing right here that the intensity of what the, both communities are expecting out of a ball game like this. David Smyre, the uh, running back off to the right of Chavez, certainly a throwing down on second and 24, and he'll drop back. And has a man open out in the flat and is caught at the 45 and down to the 38-yard line with the reception is Charlie Gomez. Again, they're liking what they're seeing out here in the flat. This is, they're coming bubble to this side this time. They're making making the Holy Cross defense chase a little bit here. What Pretty good coverage, pretty good pursuit, though, applied by Jacob Olivetis, uh, the junior defensive back that time. So that's a more manageable third down and 13. What type of play is a, is a typical third and 13? Uh, you can run any kind of stick route or a comeback route to the outside or any kind of a quarterback draw, uh, depending on what Coach Santiago has in his toolbox here. Keep an eye on number 24, the slot receiver to the right, as they send a man in motion. And Chavez is going to throw across the middle, and it is caught, but it's going to be well short of a first down as uh, the uh, Knights were dropped back in the zone and in the right spot as Taralva was tackled just as he caught the football. Yeah, and it was a great hit applied this time by number 44 for Holy Cross. So uh, Andy Gomez here, he breaks down, comes to balance there. They, they gave up the underneath routes on that, Bobby, and they made sure that they rallied to the play and uh, made sure that they had brought up a fourth down. One thing I know about Holy Cross, they're going to bring the wood, man. These guys hit. Well, I talked to Coach Harrison uh, Wednesday this week, and he was talking about how on defense he said, uh, watch watch what we do. He said we're going to be coming from all angles. We're going to be moving bodies, and we're going to be getting after him up front. Four seconds on the play clock, and Chavez on fourth down. They're going to go for it. He's going to throw it across the middle, and it's caught. And that's going to be a first down for the Central Catholic Buttons. Again, it's Charlie Gomez, the tight end, and a first down for Central as they convert on fourth down. That was kind of that comeback philosophy so to speak they get him there and he stops right there in the dead spot of that zone defense of the three four defense of holy cross uh great throw and great catch it was on time uh that's a really hard route to cover in that secondary right there so first down and 10 all the way down to the 13 it's been a bizarre drive but that was just good execution as chavez will throw again and a sliding grab for a short gain and again they find Garza, Gibby Garza. Well, look, it was supposed to be a run after catch type of play there. With a quick game like that, when they're throwing the bubble route to the flat and they're throwing the little out route like they just did there, that is their running game on first down. They're trying to set up second and mid, uh, second and manageable, gives you some more uh, options to, in your playbook to call, uh, especially down on this end of the field here. So that's kind of that's kind of what they're doing instead of the old tall sweep and things like that. They're getting it out in the flat and trying to create 
an athlete in space. Second down and nine here for the Buttons. They've chewed up some clock here in the first quarter as Chavez going to throw. Looks left, lobs it up, and it is picked off. No, he dropped it. De La Garza had it. Couldn't hold on. He had the great positioning there. Good job right here climbing the ladder. He had inside leverage on him right here. And, again, this is one of the Holy Cross's keys of victory. So far, the secondary showed up on this first drive. I don't know if he might have had that or not. He dropped it at the end, though, but great coverage. Those guys have been playing great this whole drive here. They tried to throw the fade to Karam, and it looked like Chavez underthrew it a bit, but the coverage was excellent. Certainly in field goal range here for the Buttons, but it's third down and nine. They need to get to the uh, four-yard line as Chavez will throw, and it is caught. Can he get there? It's going to be close. I think depends on the spot. About a yard short as that was uh, hauled in by Doug Karam. I'll tell you what, Chavez is doing a good job on his quick game. He's delivering that football right now, Bobby, on time. You know, number four, Mark Garcia slipped a little bit in the coverage, and that didn't help the situation there. He would probably would have been on time on that as well, but so far it's Chavez. When you get this close, it's so tempting to go for it. I mean, this is field goal range, but, I mean, it's fourth and less than a yard. Well, just, I mean, they're going for it. They're, <laughs> they're, Coach Santiago's like, you know what, in a game like this, we've been owning the clock right here. And so they will go under center, and that's the safest play in football. One of the best, Nick Chavez, the quarterback with the sneak, and a first down for Central Catholic. Again, great job by the big the big nasties up front for Central Catholic. They just roll their bodies back, pad under pad. Old school football right there, Bob. Well, this has turned into a good drive. It was benefited by two penalties that gave them two first downs, but since then, the Buttons have really executed. I'll tell you what, they've eaten up half the quarter, and they're throwing the football, so, I mean, it's it could be done where you manage the clock like that and something like this, but let's see if Holy Cross can bow their necks right here and, and get a turnover maybe or something like that, get in the backfield. David Smyer dots the eye, and he'll get the handoff going left, and this play was whistled dead prior to the snap. It's going to be on Central Catholic here. All right, so a false start there. Get some, puts them back to the seven-yard line now. Again, they'll go offset eye with David David's Meyer, the eye back. Same play. Iso left, big hole, and he breaks the tackle at the three-yard line and scores. There is a flag right at the line of scrimmage. It's going over here on the Central Catholic sideline here. Let's see. A false start. Wow. Well, Coach Mike Santiago... Not going to like that one, Andy. They scored a touchdown, and somebody jumped a little early, and it was I think it was out on the edge. Well, I mean, it, it happened. It wasn't a dead ball. They did blow it dead, though. You're right. So they got to calm down here. It is getting kind of loud. Like you're saying, that crowd is filing in. And these By the way, are, behind us, I wish we had a camera back behind yeah, the stadium. Down the street, man. They are all the way out to Toledo Street behind Alamo Stadium. What a great crowd filing in here at Alamo Stadium. And, Historic venue and a historic Holy Bowl here. First and goal, and it's at the 12-yard line. They're going to hand it off again. David Meyer stacked up at the line of scrimmage, and that one well defended by the Knights. Now a host of Holy Cross kiddos showing up for that one right here. I'll tell you what, they're playing the spire. At that time, they, Bobby, they had a four-man down line, and they're bringing guys through gaps, and they're just trying to penetrate. They know that they got... Central Catholic backing up here, and they're trying to take advantage of that. You know, it's second down and goal to go from the 13. All right, so down to 520. Boy, will Holy Cross see the ball in this quarter? That's one of the uh, next questions as Nick Chavez goes shotgun, two back set, and he uh, motions a man to the wing, and he'll throw in coverage. This is caught at the nine-yard line, a really short route there by Doug Karam. And again, I mean, Garza, Garza does a great job of, uh, or excuse me, Chavez does a great job getting the ball on time, but I'm looking at the secondary. Number four right there is on time, Mark, uh, Mark Garcia. So, I mean, they're playing everything they can do right here. It's, it's been a back-and-forth battle so far. 
You know, I think Coach Santiago's probably pleased with the idea that we've eaten up this first quarter, but he'll be more pleased if they get points out of it. Well, that's the, that's the thing that matters. Do they get points out of this drive? Chavez on third and goal. Looks, throws to the end zone, Uh-oh. and it's picked off. This time it will count. And coming out with the pick is Augustine Barrera. He's one of the bigger defensive backs you'll ever see, and he was in the right place at the right time. Great coverage right here. He read the eyes of the quarterback and jumped it. And uh, Chavez went to the well one too, too many times here, and that's that's the importance of these early penalties. Central Catholic, Catholic Buttons shot themselves in the foot twice when they were on the one-yard one, one yard line. All right, let's take a look now at the uh, starting offense. Holy Cross finally gets the football. As Gibby Salinas uh, will lead the troops. There's the offensive line. They're always big, strong, and physical up front at Holy Cross. The uh, backfield includes uh, Salinas. And Kalijah Michael, keep an eye on that young man as uh, we will go shotgun set, first and ten, and they'll run it up the middle with Ethan Lara for a short gain as Ortiz, Garza, and Arguella, the receivers there for the uh, Holy Cross Knights. Let's take a look at the defense now. Up front there, Brown, Alinas, Alanis, rather. And the rest of that defensive line. As there's the defensive uh, linebackers for the uh, Central Catholic Buttons. And uh, there's the defensive line again. <laughs> Second down and five as uh, Salinas, uh, Salas rather, will roll left on the shotgun snap. Sets up, and he's going to fire this one deep and a diving attempt, but incomplete as he was looking downfield for. Roman Garza, who actually had a step on the defender. I like the call right here. You got a turnover, sudden change. Go ahead and take you a shot down here. Wasn't a bad throw. Uh, just a little bit over the outreach hands here. But uh, anytime you're you're playing in a game like this and you get a quick turnover, go ahead and take you a shot. 3.39 to go here. First quarter. No score here at the 47th. I can't say annual because they've had some breaks in the action. This is the first time in five years they've played. But the 47th Holy Bowl. The first time it was played, it was played at Mission Stadium in 1960. That was the old baseball field over off Pro Bat, just south of uh, 90. As Salas will go shotgun again on third down, he'll hand the ball off, and this one is blown up. Nowhere to go for Lada. Great penetration by the Buttons. Carlos Reyes, linebacker for the Buttons that time. He sniffed it out. And then we get a, a scuffle after the play. Yep. And that's unfortunate. Well, the emotions, I, I think at some point, Andy, they're, they're going to settle. The emotions are high. This is the first time that the central defense has faced the Holy Cross offense. So these guys are getting the bang heads for the first time, yeah. and the unsportsmanlike will be against Holy Cross. Yep, and I, I, they, you saw it in the, the, the first drive with the other, you know, the other offenses and defenses out there. That's part of it, man. They're going to have to work. The only problem is Holy Cross is in the shadow of their goalposts here. They need to be smart. All the way down to 327, and the uh, drive for Holy Cross stalls as Gibby Salas, the quarterback, is also the punter for the uh, Knights as uh, Eladio Gomez back to receive the punt as he awaits at his own, or rather at the Holy Cross 35. And movement again. This has not been the uh, drive that Coach Mike Harrison wanted. No. We got Holy Cross moving here. They've got to settle down a little bit. I mean, it's only a one-and-a-half-yard penalty at this stage, but it does back your punter up, and his heels are going to be on the, the end line here. You never like that. And so, uh, Salas, look where he's at, Andy. All the way back, almost to the back of the end zone. That is a really tough spot to be. And again, uh, Gomez back to receive for Central Catholic. The Buttons should get good field position, but they jump off sides. <laughs> now that was a three-quarter of a yard penalty right here, half the distance. These kids need to settle in here. I mean, it's just, gosh dang it, you don't want to see that. But the noise here is 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 a factor, but they need to be mentally disciplined something like that and just sit in there well 
I don't know that uh, Gibby Salas can go back a whole lot further here. Now they're snapping at what, 10 yards? It's and this always, is a very dangerous of getting this yeah, up. Snap it over his head or something. I mean, it's always dangerous. Quick snap, and he does get it off. And Gomez is going to chase it all the way across the field. He'll pick it up at the 45. He'll head up the sidelines. He'll make a great cut and a nice return as he's still on his feet. Boy, he didn't go very far, but the effort there by Gomez on that return was outstanding. And the Buttons will have great field position. Yeah, I was I was impressed that, that Salas was even able to get the ball out of the end zone, Bobby. So, I mean, they dodged a bullet there. And, uh, you know, Central Catholic was able to flip the field on that possession and have the ball in great field position inside the 40-yard uh, line of Holy Cross. Don't forget to vote for who you think will be the John Wayne player of the game in tonight's game. If you uh, the, get the winner correct, you will win a very cool player of the game cap and are automatically registered for a $25,000 home makeover. Get your vote in now at John Wayne. Dot com. All you got to do is pick the winner. And uh, well, here we some, go. Other side of the ball, Bobby. Lots of penalties in this one. So they'll start first and 15. So. Andy coached for 23 years. I think the settle in is going to come at some point, <laughs> but it hasn't yet. They'll run the uh, reverse the and ground. it's dropped. And that's going to lose big yardage. And one of the keys was getting Gibby Garza the football. They tried to there. I think they might have had it fairly well set up if they executed better. Yeah, they had a little trickeration planned right here, a little misdirection downhill. And uh, you got to get the ball before you go anywhere. He forgot the most important thing there. But it's showing you the importance of this ball game. They're trying to do whatever it takes to try to get, get an advantage and, and get points on the board. Down to 204 here, first quarter of play. Sloppy for a lot of the game, but Central Catholic has executed the ball. They have 54 passing yards here in the uh, first quarter as Chavez will throw again, second and long, going to throw deep. Up for grabs, and this is going to be picked off. And again, we talked about that secondary playing well. That's uh, Mark Garcia with the pick. Two interceptions now for the uh, Holy Cross Knight defense. Well, I tell you what, Chavez had to get rid of the ball earlier there. He had pressure in his face. He got hit just as he released it. And I think that's part of the reason that ball was uh, a little off time there. Great job, though, bringing it in by, uh, by Garcia. Let's go to Gabe on the sideline. Salas out of the shotgun. Laura next to him. Laura hands it off, and they run the flea flicker, and they're trying to set up a screen. And they actually catch the ball but lose yardage as the uh, pass from Salas to Garza led him straight to the sidelines and out of bounds with a loss on the play. A little trickery right here, a little reverse flea flicker. Screen. What yeah. you would call that. And again, both teams, are, you're going to see everything tonight. The kitchen sink is going to be thrown out here before it's over with. It's a big deal to both these communities, and these kids know it. These kids feel the, feel the, not the pressure so much, but the emotion behind this and, and how these communities feel about this game. The referee is asking the uh, clock to be reset at 126, which they do. And it is second down and 12 now for Holy Cross. Gibby Salas is the quarterback. Ethan Lada, the running back off to his right. As they send motion to the right side of the formation. And an, is that another penalty? No, timeout, timeout taken by Holy Cross. So we'll break it with them. You are watching the high school showcase presented by John Wayne Service Company on KCWX TV.
Back to action here at Alamo Stadium. Second and 12 for Holy Cross after the timeout. Silas is going to keep it, and it's blown up. And right now, the Central Catholic defensive line has just taken it to Holy Cross up front. Yeah, they're coming off the ball. You know, Central Catholic's running a four-man front right here, Bobby. They're getting good penetration. They weren't fooled by the, the run fake there. The re they weren't reading it on that. That was, a, that was a straight quarterback run on that, and they showed up in force on that one. Already a lot of penalties in this game. Central Catholic penalized five times for 35 yards in this first quarter. Holy Cross six for 50. We're scoreless late in the first quarter of play of the 47th Holy Bowl. As uh, Gibby Salas will break the huddle with his team, he'll go from the shotgun. A throwing down here on third and 16. Play clock down to one. And did they get a timeout? They did not. And that will be the seventh penalty of the first quarter. That, that's a game full. It's number three. Five yeah. yards, third down. You hate to see that coming off of a, a loss like that. Quarterback's got to see the play clock too, though. But in any case, we're going backwards here on the, uh, the rushing statistics. Now third and 21. This may be a... Uh, kind of a just concede the play and try to get what you can for the punt. We'll see. Silas will bring him up. Pistol set. Two wides to the right side. Takes the snap and will hand it off. And right down Main Street goes Lada for a couple of yards. That's a good first down play. Well, that's a positive Not a great <laughs> fourth and 21 play as uh, we have a special guest after the punt here. And this guy is a legend in uh, Central Catholic, uh, but, but we'll take a break and we'll come back after that and introduce him in just a moment. That's the end of the first quarter of play. Scoreless in the 47th Holy Bowl. You are watching the High School Showcase presented by John Wayne Service Company on KCWX-TV. So it's punt time as we start the second quarter of play in a scoreless Holy Bowl. Central Catholic defense has absolutely shut down Holy Cross so far. It's going to be the third punt of the game for Holy Cross right here, Bobby. Good rush, but he gets it off. Pretty good punt, and Goma is going to take it at his own 42-yard line. Avoids one. And then backpedals and tackled at his own 45 as there's a flag on the play. As we go down to the field with a special guest standing by with Gabe Farias. All right, guys, I've got uh, former head football coach and athletic director and Central Catholic graduate, Carlos Enrico. Coach, thanks so very much for coming out. How awesome is it that this rivalry is back? Well, I tell you what, you can tell by all the hitting out on the field. And uh, I tell you what, it's intense. And uh, it's, 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 it's good that they're back on the field playing again. And this is one of those rivalries, Coach, that belongs here at Alamo Stadium. Just west is Holy Cross. Just east is Central Catholic. This is the right spot for this game. No, they should be playing at Central Catholic, Gabe, <laughs> <laughs> to be honest with you. But, uh, it, yeah, this is a great this is a great venue. Great what you, venue. What are your thoughts of the first quarter? Well, I tell you what, both teams are, are they, they're, they're rarely scouted each other very well, and there's a lot of good hitting out there. Should be a good one the rest of the game. Yeah, it'll come down to the end. All right, and I, and I do not look like a blueberry. I don't know why you think that. <laughs> I'm glad you're wearing blue anyway. Right. There you go, guys. Back to you. All right, Central Catholic uh, with a short run there on first down. Well, I love uh, Carlos Enrico. He, he's a legend in the yeah. San Antonio high school coaching profession. No 
And if anybody knows the history of this game right here and what it means to both communities, it's him. And he's absolutely right. These kids are flying around, they're hitting, they're playing with emotion, and it's all because of that particular rivalry. Nick Chavez will go shotgun again. Second down and 10 here for the Buttons. Looks near side and throws. Route jumped again, and it's incomplete. Boy, the secondary is breaking on the ball very, very well so far as Jared uh, Taralva was the intended target. As Mark Garcia again, he already has the interception tonight. He jumps it and almost Ooh, gets there. He's on time. Yeah, he is. And again, Coach Harrison, that was one of his main points Wednesday when I was talking to him on the phone. He's like, look, we have got to show up on time with our secondary. And, and, and so far, so good. They, you can tell that's something that they really focused on this week. Third down and 10 here for the uh, Central Catholic Buttons. They are 0 for 2 tonight on third down conversions. Third and 10. Back to pass, Chavez looks deep up the near side. A lot of bumping going on, but I think good coverage. Taralva, the intended target, covered well again. Yeah, Mark Garcia, again, I don't know if they they like that matchup or not, but it was great coverage. This will be uh, the first punt tonight for Central Catholic. The other two were turnovers, so. So the uh, buttons are going to punt away. And uh, Holy Cross, a couple of return men. And uh, including, they got them stacked back there. How do you, uh, just, you have a blocking back in front. It is um, Ethan Lada back deep, but he has a blocking back in front of him. Or they're playing the short punt, deep punt. I mean, that's a, that's a possibility too. Offense, five yards, fourth down. I don't think they took that penalty on purpose to back it up for a better angle, Bobby. That's just a, they need to settle down on the penalty. That's a bunch of penalties early on in this ballgame. Franco Carida is the punter. Takes the snap, rushes on, he barely got it off. Lada will take a good punt back at his own 25-yard line. Heads to the right sideline. Stops and heads forward. And stacked up at the 33-yard line as the buttons flew to the football on coverage that was an excellent punt though it was good job getting it off it almost looked like it was it got tipped on that particular day it was a pretty good rush by by uh, holy cross on that as well but ball ended up being pretty decent punt and flipped the field there all right well holy cross has done nothing in the uh, r offensively they've got two rushing yards they're minus two passing and uh, it just hasn't been working so far for the knights offensively it's scoreless central had a scoring opportunity, but they were stopped with an interception in the end zone. Their first drive was a good one. As Salas will bring the Knights up. Twin receivers to the short side right. And he takes the snap. He'll hand it off. And straight ahead goes Lada. And, man, he was hit. Nothing doing. We got my, uh, John Montalongo stepping up in there. He had something to say about that. He got there. He got there in a hurry, and he was not in a good mood when he got there. I don't know if he's related to the Montalongo Longberg Company, but he certainly brought the wood on that play. Uh, <laughs> uh, Bobby. That was just too easy, uh, wasn't it? I, you I, you it stepped right into that one. Uh, send the check to TSP Montalongo. Yeah. <laughs> 10, 15 to go here in the quarter. Here comes the jet sweep, and they go to Lada who uh, will take it forward to the 37. He's normally the running back, and they split him out and try to get him on the jet sweep going yeah, they're, forward. They're just trying to give it a different look right here to the linebackers. He does a good job getting his foot in the ground and getting what he can get on that right there because he was he was dead to rights. That play's designed to probably get outside a little bit more than that, but he did a good job getting up inside. Central Catholic up front, they've had great leverage. They've also run around a lot of blocks. Holy Cross is going to have to do a better job at the line of scrimmage if they're going to score any points tonight. Third down and seven for the Knights. Gibby Salas, the quarterback, blitz on the way as he'll roll right. Looks, fires, and this is too high as he was looking along the sidelines for uh, Roman Garza. Run a little, little half sprint right here, Bobby. They're trying to get it past the first down marker there. Ball was a little bit high, a little bit off the mark. And so another three and out for a Holy Cross. 
That is, uh, it's just been a tough offensive night. You, a lot of it, I, I think you just got to give a lot of credit to the central defense. They've, they've won the battle in the trenches so far, they, clearly. They, they have, and they have eight guys in the box right now, so it's hard to run the football if you're Holy Cross. And the Holy Cross coaches staff, I promise, they're working on their script that they ran for, or that they made for the first two or three drives here, trying to feel out what they're, what they're going to be capable of doing. And they get a delay of game before the punt. Let's go to Gabe. Go to Gabe Farias on the sidelines. Yeah, you know, Andy is right. You got to give a lot of credit to that to Central Catholic defense. But I'll tell you what I think it is more, Bob and Andy. I think Central Catholic offense and that long drive that completely uh, took the Holy Cross offense out of this game before it even started. They've come out on both series and just look incredible sluggage. Back to you guys. They'll kick away from Gomez, but he'll run over there near the football, and now it will take a nice roll. Gomez thought about picking it up, and look at this punt. All the way down to the 22-yard line, and right on cue, there's another flag on the play. It's back here by the line of scrimmage here, thrown by the umpire. Discussion uh, near the line of scrimmage. Probably going to be holding yeah. receiving team number 57 10 yards from the end of the kick Well, that's kind of a that's kind of an iffy deal there uh, Once the ball because possession has to change before it to be a hold and they were in the hold, trying to hold guys up on the punt return uh, To set up a punt return uh, Play but in any case they called it a hold from the umpire and it was a really good punt by it Silas great, It was a great punt. I think every referee's throwing a flag tonight at least once Bobby <laughs> so that's you know they're going to have to. They're going to have to trade out their flags at halftime. Six-man crew here, so. It didn't, no, it's a seven-man crew. Oh, they went seven, didn't they? Yes. Yeah, there's seven. It's the full staff. Still scoreless. 9-12 here in the second quarter. Play as Central will keep it on the ground here. The buttons take it out to the 15-yard line. As good defense. Being conservative here, Bobby, just trying to get up in there and try to impose their will up front. You know they. They got negative rushing yardage right now, Central Catholic does, and they've been throwing the ball well. So I don't know if they're trying to, to establish the running game a little bit here, but their, their best bet is their passing game when they get in those spread sets. Well, Hank Hernandez was listed as the starting running back, but it's mainly been Zach Davidsmeyer for Central Catholic tonight. Second down and seven, and Chavez is going to throw. Has a man across the middle and is caught for a first down, and all the way to the 26-yard line goes Jared Taralva for the button first down. Well, they bring a little pressure right here. It opens up a window. You'll see it. Linebackers leave. He just vacated. He replaces where the linebackers were. Wide open. Good read there by Nick Chavez. Nick senior Chavez. quarterback. He had a full year under Coach Mike Santiago last year, right. junior year. So he's in his system, and he understands what Coach, you know, Coach is looking at, trying to find, you know, find his reads and find open areas. Buttons out to the 27-yard uh, line, first and 10. Chavez to throw again. Flares it out and bobbled, and Davidsmeyer couldn't haul it in. That's a great job, Kalijah Michael, out there to greet him. That's a big kid right there, Bobby. 6'2, about 230, 235 pounds, and moves well. Well, Holy Cross a couple of years ago I had a kid named Pena, who was the world record holder in the squat as a freshman, sophomore, junior, and senior. All in those age groups, he owns all the squat world records, including over a thousand pounds. His uh <laughs> his junior and senior year and he was one of those guys that, that, that put the culture of hitting the weights hard and that's why you see so much good size out there for Holy Cross as Chavez was hit as he threw that one he took a pretty violent hit there and the pass goes incomplete yeah they're bringing they're bringing like we said they were going to do Bobby Holy Cross is bringing heat they're, they're giving different looks up front trying to confuse the offensive line of the Central Catholic and they were able to get a shot a blindside shot that time on Chavez. He's got third down to 10 here. The Central Catholic fans, they've got a great student body there. Them in uh, Providence High School next door supporting each other. We have a great crowd here tonight at Alamo Stadium watching the 47th Holy Bowl. At least 7,000 plus, I think, already as we have a timeout on the field. Oh, 
All right, 7.55 to go here in the second, still scoreless. You're watching the high school football showcase presented by John Wayne Service Company on KCWX-TV. Back at the Grand Rock Pile, Alamo Stadium. Third down and 10 as Chavez deep drop. Screen pass to Davidsmeyer. Up the field he goes, 30, and out to the 35. 34 is where they'll mark him. That's going to be short of the first down. Pretty good idea, though, by the Buttons. Yeah, that, again, that's been their success so far. What's going on inside the Holy Cross is they're making too much traffic. It's too jumbled up in there. Their best bet's getting it out there in the flat any way they can, whether with their quick passing game. Or you know, you know, quick bubble passes and things like that. That's been their, that's been their go-to, and it's been very successful for them this far. And so the uh, buttons will punt away. We will have a special guest again on the sidelines after the uh, punt, as uh, Lada is back to return. Low liner, Lada's going to let it bounce, and now he's going to retreat back oh. and fumble it, and it's loose. And the Buttons have it. Oh. A muffed punt. That reminds us of last week. Aiden O'Donnell recovers for Central Catholic. There is a flag on the play, Bobby. That's going to be critical. It happened at the 19-yard line. Gabe, we'll have to hold off here just a moment. Post. Just see. Sideline warning. Oh. Central Catholic. Five yard penalty. Well, five yard penalty on the sideline warning. Well, you know, Lada just couldn't make up his mind here, and then it skipped like a bad hop on a shortstop. And yeah, we forget this is a pointed ball, it's not round, but he's trying to make sure that ball didn't bounce inside the five. But I was wondering if he was going to just get out of the way and Hindsight says you should have. Yeah, yeah, well, we're dealing with 16, 17, 18-year-old kids. They're always known for making great decisions, right? <laughs> so are 47-year-olds, yeah, right? Yeah, right, right. It, it continues, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> First and goal, Central Catholic. They get a muffed punt, and now they're in striking distance to try to get the game's first score. Chavez will toss it to Davids Meyer, trying to get the edge, and he oh. fumbles it. And it's loose. At the 20 and 19 yard line. And they are fighting for the ball here. Well, they give it and they may have taken it away. Oh, and they did. Football. And my bad, that was uh, Hernandez on the run and he had it knocked loose. Baron what a Rebus. big hit. Baron Rebus was there. And Kalijah Michael got a helmet right on the football. Yeah. This defense is playing lights out for Holy Cross right now. They're doing a great job of mixing up the play. Rivas recovers it. And let's uh, head to Gabe Farias on the sideline. All right, guys, we've got another special guest here on the sideline. We've got uh, Dr. Rene Escovedo, the principal of Holy Cross High School. You got to see all this action up front. This is a fantastically renewed rivalry. I'm so excited. I'm sure you are, too, as is the Holy Cross family. Oh, definitely. Holy Cross is very excited about this week. We've had a great week. And just to bring back, bring back the rivalry to San Antonio, it's good for all Catholic schools. To get to see Catholic school kids doing great things on the field, translates to the classroom, and the city gets to celebrate that. Right, Down the field, second, and is there a flag? The receiver's trying to come back right. to the ball, and it's a late flag. 
Well, and they may get the pass interference. The question was the ball catchable. Well, the ball was so far behind him. I don't know. You make the argument if he wasn't blocked, it would have been catchable. So I don't know. That's what they're going to talk about. But again, they're taking a shot after a turnover here, Bobby. That's what they did before. They they got a turnover. They're taking it deep. All Not right. quite the arm to get there, but he's trying to get back in the referee. Okay. There it Defense, is. Defense number 20, 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. So first down for Holy Cross. Let's head back to Gabe. Dr. Escobedo, how are things going in Holy Cross this year? Seems like things are really revived out there. Things are going great. You know, it's a, it, Holy Cross is a true faith community. We love to be celebrating our, our kids and all of their accomplishments. But the best part about it is, is that our families embrace Catholic education. Catholic education is so important for the city of San Antonio, and we're so glad that we can showcase it tonight. Best of luck, Dr. Escobedo. Thanks so much for coming out. Thank you very much. All right, guys, back to you. Salas uh, well, gets the first down on the pass interference, moves it out to the 34-yard line. Bobbles the snap slightly and hands to Lada in the running game. Yeah, it's not. It, it's just not there. Great job by the front four of the Buttons right here. They're just kind of manhandling the guys up front for Holy Cross right now, Bobby. You know, uh, you know, they're even trying to bring Big O, uh, Kalaja Michael across to help out a little bit. I like the scheme. I think the scheme's there, but right now there's just too much penetration going on up front by the Buttons. Elijah Michael has not left the game. He's playing. He's playing a lot of H-back. He's playing inside linebacker. It's a very sticky night out there. And Central has blown two scoring opportunities. Now Holy Cross tries to capitalize on the turnover as Silas looks on to a defense that's stacking the line of scrimmage, and he's going to throw a dump pass that's off the receiver's hands. They had the right call. Yeah, he was there. Again, the ball's off the mark just a little bit by, uh, by Silas that time. You know, the you got to be able to take advantage of that because Central Catholic was inside. They were stepping up in there showing blitz, and they brought everybody in every gap there. So there was an opening, a dead space behind those guys, and, and just a little high, a little off the mark there. Couldn't pull it in. you got to believe that that Coach Mike Santiago is super frustrated. They've had first and goal two different times, and there's still a goose egg on the scoreboard. That has a lot to do with the Holy, the Holy Cross defense, Bobby. They've done a heck of a job mixing it up on the defensive side, creating turnovers. Third down and 10, and before that, we get a timeout. They were about to get a delay of game penalty as we will take it with them. Still scoreless here at Alamo Stadium in the Holy Bowl as you're watching the high school football showcase presented by John Wayne Service Company on KCWX-TV. yards, fourth down. Well, folks, we apologize. We missed a, a one play, but it was a run out of bounds by Salas. He couldn't find anyone open. 
And to add insult to injury, there was a 15-yard penalty against Holy Cross. Yeah, they are. They're adding up the penalty yardage now, up to 75 yards of penalties. The play went to the sideline. The tackle was made on the sideline. One of the Holy Cross players was physical, too long out of bounds, and and the referee threw the flag for unnecessary roughness. So that moves him back, uh, and and the down does go to fourth down. So uh, Gomez is going to uh, get into return position here for the button. Silas had a great punt last go-around. Good snap, but not a good punt this time. Short punt, straight to the sidelines and out of bounds, well within Holy Cross territory. And once again, Central Catholic's going to have great, great field position. And Holy Cross's defense is back on the field. You know, Holy Cross defense are playing, they're playing lights out. They're giving, they're giving the Knights every opportunity to win the game. They've created three turnovers so far, Bobby. And uh, the offense just, you know, they keep shooting themselves in the foot, and that 15-yard penalty, and then that dead-footed punt right there. So Holy Cross is setting up shop again inside of uh, the Knights' territory here. So first down and 10, still scoreless. Again, Central Catholic twice, not only in the in the red zone, they were in first and goal two different times and came up scoreless, both times because of a turnover, an interception, right. and then the uh, fumble. So, play a physical ball game right here. Buttons first and 10 at the 38 of Holy Cross. Nick Chavez takes the snap, drops back, rolls left, pressured, sack. Took too long there as uh, Mason Alvarado finally gets to him. I'll tell you what, Bobby, that was a coverage sack right there. If you ever if you get the replay, you'll see they're sitting back in that 3-4. Lots of bodies sitting back, lots of people getting in the throwing lanes, and, and that allowed... Uh, Allowed Alvarado to get to the quarterback here. Great job. They tried to run a little scissors route on the outside there, and they ran into each other. Again, secondary for a Holy Cross there. Solid, Bobby. That was one of the concerns tonight. Could they hold up against this passing attack of Central Catholic? The Buttons have 72 yards passing on the evening. Second down and 20 now with five minutes to go here in the first half and a timeout taken by Central Catholic. Still scoreless, you're watching the High School Football Showcase presented by John Wayne Service Company on KCWX-TV. And 20 as they flare the uh, ball out. And it is caught out to the uh, 41 yard line. And there it is again, Bobby. Again, we've said already success is happening for the Buttons right now. Passing game when they get out in the flat, they're challenging that overhang flat defender. Pretty good hit applied that time, though, coming flying in there. Mark Garcia coming in there trying to lay the wood a little bit. They're playing physical. But so far, the Coach Santiago's offense has been outside the tackles in, in ten to five to ten yards in the flat route right here in the dead spots of the Holy Cross defense. Next. folks we apologize uh, KCWX we are taking 60 second timeouts during the game as scheduled we missed two plays and it was a, a button short pass and then an incompletion 
We apologize, folks. We had it scheduled at 60-second breaks, but we went to two minutes, and I have no idea why. So let's try to keep that straight back at the uh, studios as uh, Central's going to punt. That was a good stop by Holy Cross. Once again, as the defense has held up. Here's the punt. Lada going to go under it, and fair catch at this time at the 14-yard line. I don't know what uh, else to say, but I'm impressed that Holy Cross defense has been put in bad situation right. after bad situation, and they continue to hold Central out of the end zone. And I'll tell you what, this defense, they've been well coached, and uh, they're, they're, they're giving everything they can to Central Catholic's offense. So it's going to be give and take. It's going to come down to probably probably turnovers in, in the special teams when it's all said and done here. But this thing looks like it's going to go down uh, to the wire here. So first and ten. First down and 10 now for the Knights. Salas shotgun snap. Free play here. Should throw it downfield, and he does, and the pass is caught. <laughs> Holy cow. Just like they drew it up, right? Yeah, that's one way to do it. What a play there. Comeback route by uh, Roman Garza. He turned around, and the ball was there. Well, he had to come back because the quarterback got rid of it quick because he knew he had a free play. They'll decline the penalty. That's a, a positive offensive play for the Holy Cross Knights. Yeah, they needed that to get out of their, their end of the end zone there. That's how the back shoulder fade was developed, by the way, on accident like that. They figured out you could come back. Still scoreless. Holy Cross trying to finally mount some offense here. Salas. Long count here. Alabadas is the new running back. He'll get the call. And he'll fight his way. That's a good first down run out to the 40-yard line. They're actually going off center or off center and guard hole right there that time. Straight ahead, able to get into uh Oliveras gets into the A-gap there and, and uh, coming here right at you right here. There's your pick and pull collision. Boom. Right there. Shoulder pass down. Picked up four yards that time. That's a positive play relative to what they've been able to do. So we got positive play after positive play going right here. A little momentum for the Knights. Central's out of timeout. Holy Cross has won. Now our, our, our board is wrong there as uh, Silas is going to throw. Uh, Willie escapes and does get it away and is caught for a first down. And Silas has done a good job. Of ad living there and uh, making something happen. There's Kalijah Michael, the two way guy, with the reception for the first down. He is a big target. Look at him. He's wanting the ball like a post player in basketball right there, finding him on the broken play. Great job. That's three plays in a row right here for the offense. They're moving the football here at midfield. Ball at midfield now with 2.30 to go here in the first half. Finally mounting some offense and a lot of Gibby Salinas. Or Silas, rather, doing his best Houdini imitation. This time, he will hand the ball off to Lada. And again, on first down, they go uh, straight ahead for five. Well, right now, they're, they're hitting it straight ahead. That's that, right down Main Street, as you like to say, Bobby. That's that's where it's at uh, in, the, in the B gap. It's a shoulder pads down. Runs through the linebacker's tackle right there. Nice pin there by Big 77, Marcus Coronado. I'm, yeah, they're actually doing some work right there kicking out and blocking down so that's a pretty good scheme a little trap scheme there that time second down and five here Silas with Lada to his left Central showing blitz they give to Lada right at the blitz 40 35 30 and out of bounds into Central territory goes Ethan Lada for the first down they pull a two backside lineman right here Bobby watch this he gets right behind him they're trying to slow down the penetration of Central Catholic. One way you do that is by pulling linemen and able to get up in there, get to, get into the edge right there, get to the sideline for a big game. I think that uh, Holy Cross is kind of, they're still emotional, but they they haven't let the emotions get the best of them. They're starting to execute their offense. They're trying to, they're trying to penetrate some, what Holy Cross is going to. They're going to a down-down kick scheme that's going to have to slow those guys down. You can't get upfield or you're going to get kicked out. So the Knights have a first and 10, deepest penetration of the game at the 27. Salas to throw. Here comes the pressure again. He scrambles to his right, and he's going to throw it away, but that didn't make the uh, 
line of scrimmage, and that's going to be a penalty. Yeah. He waited a little long. Yeah, right idea, but wrong timing. You got to you gotta throw it away a little sooner there. I think he thought he was going to be able to uh, circle around Brown, but he couldn't. Well, they're trying first down there. I, you know, I like the call. They're trying first down, trying to get the ball downfield, work down the field, but that takes time. And it was a great job by Central Catholic defense getting in there and getting in his face. And back him up here. Intentional grounding. Offense, loss of down, second down. Well, they're not the style of offense that can sustain too many of those. That is now, I believe, 10 penalties against Holy Cross in the first half. 133 to go. Holy Cross trying to get something here. Second and 17. Salah shotgun snap rolls right. They're looking to the backside for the screen, and it is caught. And at the 35-yard line, and knocked out is Michael Kalijah Michael, Kalijah, Kalijah Michael, and there's flags down the field. And they're trying to throw a little, little, little hide screen right here. They're going to get a penalty on one of the big guys for uh, Holy Cross here. Well, it wasn't. I think that was a clean hit before he got out of bounds. But that's going to be, a, yes, a, that's what I saw too. So let's see if they call it here. Chop block on Holy Cross. Illegal block in the back. Or back. Offense number two. Ten yards from the end of the run. You often see that when you have a play that has that much yeah. misdirection. Long developing play. You're trying to get defensive lineman up the field towards the quarterback. Towards the quarterback, he dumps it off on a guy running the screen back that way. So it's people trying to hold their blocks a long time or the timing of the block is off and that results in some sort of illegal use of hands of some sort. We may end up with the goose eggs here at the end of the first half and it's not because there weren't opportunities. Second and 27 now. Salah's going to throw. Four man rush and he's going to fire it deep and this one is going to be incomplete close coverage and the play will stand. Andres Ortiz was the intended receiver. You know, not a lot in your playbook when it's third down and 30. It and was second. Turning, or second, I'm sorry. Forever. They have a safety over the top that time. He was there on time. Great job. Gomez, Hilario Gomez being there on time. So, in any case, you know, it's one of those deals. It's when you back yourself up like that, there's not a whole lot in your offensive coordinator's playbook that's going to make that right. You're just trying to put yourself in a position that you know on in 27 now holy cross is oh out of four on third down conversions they're going to play it safe here as a uh, lot of will just run it ahead to the 41 yard line so they'll set up the punt here the good news for uh, holy cross is central catholic is out of timeout so not likely that the buttons will get a good offensive series but they've actually done a pretty good job with this running attack right here they've been going in between uh, off off the center right there. The whole drive, they're able to pick up four or five yards. It's just like I said, they have a long yardage situation there. Holy Cross is going to run the clock down here and take a timeout. We'll go ahead and keep it here all the way up until half. Well, you listen to that crowd, Bobby. I'll tell you, I mean, it's been a fun game to watch. It's a little sloppy. They're going to have to clean up some penalties and things like that. But Not know, a lack of effort at all. No, not at all. you got three turnovers. You know, you know, it's been fun to watch so far, minus the penalties. Over, by the way, at another game here in town, the Hammer Bowl. How about this score? At the half, Judson 14, Wagner 14. Well, that doesn't surprise me. It was a seven-point game at half last year, and Wagner and Charlie Bruce do a heck of a job, and that is a neighborhood rivalry, uh, very much like the game we're watching tonight. So you could throw the records and and stuff like that, and who's who out the window. It's a matter of, you know, you're playing for a little neighborhood backyard pride. And I'm glad to see this game's back because this game brings a lot of energy, uh, very reminiscent of the old Chili Bowl and things like yeah. that. There's no longer play, so it's it's fun to watch, fun to be a part of it. This is a very old rivalry, as we said. The oldest rivalry in town is now the, uh, the Frontier Bowl. Right? Now, last week at, in the area, 
or this, I mean, last night, I should say, uh, the Braunfels beat Seguin, and that's been going on over 100 years. Battle, Battle of the Guadalupe. You've coached in that one, too. I coached in that one, I sure did. You've coached in the Frontier Bowl. You, you, you coached in the uh, Battle of Guadalupe. And, uh, Battle of Cibolo Creek against Clinton. Yeah. Here's the uh, punt, and Gomez is going to run over and let it bounce, and it's going to roll inside the 10-yard line. An excellent uh -oh. punt there. And now we have another fight breaking out no. on the near sideline. Oh. Right on the sidelines. And Mike Santiago has his uh, button on the sideline saying, what, what are you doing there? It could be an offsetting, though. I, they were both. We went to wrestling. Hey, man. I thought there for a minute that uh, Civic Catholic might have touched that punt. Holy Cross touched it first. Yep. That's, okay. Now let's check the penalty here. Holding on the return. 21. Half the dis distance. First down. So if you tackle the guy, that's holding? <laughs> That, that's the yeah, he had him pinned down over here on the 40-yard line. Well, you know, unfortunately for Holy Cross, they uh, they burned that timeout. Central's got to get the ball out of this uh, territory, or they got to play it safe. I would imagine they're going to try a quarterback sneak or something safe just to make sure they don't get a safety here to end the uh, first half. And you'll see that Nick Chavez is going to go under center. He'll probably just fall down. You look at Holy Cross. they got four down linemen here. They're going to try to get in there. Yeah, he takes the quick knee. And that will do it. The Gabe Farias is going to be down on the sidelines here with Coach Mike Henner, Harrison. As uh, we have a scoreless tie here in the 47th Holy Bowl. All right. Before we go to the break, we're going to have Gabe Farias with Coach Mike Harrison. Guys, whenever you're ready. Let's go down to Gabe. All right, I got Terrison, head football coach at Holy Cross Knights. Coach, tough first half for, for both teams. Uh, assess how your team did in the first half. I think offensively we're struggling to execute. They're bringing a lot of pressure, and we're, we're struggling to pick it up right now. Our kids are going to have to learn how to uh, stay with their blocks a little bit better. I think we can move the ball. I think there's some alleys there for us. Defensively, I think we played well. I mean, we've had the ball. They, you know, we've given up the field position two or three times, and our kids have absolutely, absolutely got after and played a great first half defensively. Uh, we're going to have to keep that intensity up in the second half. Coach, best of luck second half. Thank you, Gabe. Mike Harrison, head football coach of the Holy Cross. Thanks, guys. All righty. We will uh, take a break here. It's scoreless at the Holy Bowl. Central Catholic, zero, and Holy Cross, zero. We'll be back with the halftime show in just a moment. You're watching the High School Football Showcase presented by John Wayne Service Company on KCWX-TV.
And welcome back to Alamo Stadium. We begin the uh, half here in a scoreless Holy Bowl. And it wasn't because of lack of opportunity. We'll get into that in just a moment as you watch the Central Catholic cheerleaders who come from all over the city, by the way. They're not Central Catholic students. Central Catholic is an all-boys school. And so they get a lot of their cheerleaders from Providence and some of the other private schools uh, in the area. And they come out and participate in this great tradition of Central Catholic football. And, uh, well, we've had some offense in this game by both teams, but both teams have shot themselves in the foot with turnovers as we take a look at some of the uh, first-half numbers for you. As the uh, Holy Cross Knights, <laughs> I'm not – I think we. I think it's uh, there. It is uh, total yards. That were, the first pass yards is total yards, ladies and gentlemen. The second pass. Well, is, is it? All right. Well, we're a little bit off on this, Andy. But uh, we got a scoreless tie. Both teams have moved the ball at times. Central probably more effectively than Holy Cross. Although the Knights did have mount a drive in that. Uh, in that second quarter, but uh, that was about the only offense that they were able to achieve. As we take a look, we do have the correct stats in front of us here, but not the ones on screen. So let's take a look at what we do know. For Central Catholic, they do have 77 uh, passing yards and no rushing yards here in the first half. So they've actually had a total of 77 yards in 13 minutes and 48 seconds, Andy. And they've exceeded their total yardage in offense with penalty yards 78 penalty yards 77 offensive yards that's that's not the stat that coach uh, mike santiago wanted no any any time that you're you know moving backwards we've had several second and third downs in 20s and 25s you know there's there's not a lot in the playbook that could be done about that and, and a lot of that's attributed though to the holy cross defense so uh, we'll keep that in mind as the game continues turnovers have been key here central catholic with two interceptions one in the end zone they have one fumble that came uh, as they had a first and goal uh, late in the second quarter of play. So three total turnovers by Central Catholic in this first half. For uh, Holy Cross, the biggest thing you can say for their offense is they kind of got it going in the second quarter. You could also say they've been balanced, but not necessarily in a good way. They have 67 total yards, 37 on the ground, 30 passing. But I think we're starting to see a, a little bit of confidence uh, being built up uh, by Salas, the quarterback. He's, he's kind of starting to make things happen for the Knights' offense, and maybe that'll be a trend for them coming in the uh, second half. Yeah, and, and they definitely, later in the half there, they started to settle down a little bit with their schemes up front. They were able to pick up four, five, six, and they busted it open for eight. Uh, so, yeah, look for them to come back. They're going to clean it up and, and, and be ready to go in the second half. All right, we'll uh, try to uh, situate that stat uh, board a little bit here at the break. <laughs> And we will be back with more. It's the, the, the main stat is that it's 0-0 zero, zero here at the half. Holy Cross 0 and Central Catholic 0. You're watching the 47th Holy Bowl and the High School Football Showcase presented by John Wayne Service Company on KCWX-TV.
Welcome back to Alamo Stadium at the Holy Bowl. Bobby Stotzenberg along with Andy Skelton. And, well, we've had a tough first half of football where both teams have had more penalty yards than they've had offensive yards. But the one thing that we can clearly state in this game is that the effort is just max, maxed out. I mean, these two teams are absolutely getting after it. It's going to take a moment for these young men to recover after this one. We're seeing some hitting, flying to the football, aggressive play, sometimes over-aggressive play. And well, what are your thoughts so far on this first half? You know, 0-0, zero, zero, and that's not, you know, people think that's not entertaining. I'll tell you what, in a game like this, and it's a dogfight with two communities that are rekindling a robbery, it, it, it's one of those deals that's fun to watch. It's fun to be a part of. And, yeah, these kids are going to be a little sore tomorrow, but, hey, that's part of it. That's part of playing football, you know, so – you know, as far as the score and the stats, you know, throw all that out the window, man. This is getting back to a robbery that once was, and you can tell that they're really playing their hearts out. Well, I think Central Catholic has executed their offense on two, pos uh, at least one possession where they drove down. They had a first and goal inside the 10, and then on a third down play, they ended up uh, with the uh, interception as they had a third. This was the third and goal play at the 12-yard line. Yeah, and they had just been backed up, and they, they took a shot here and great play jumping in there that was the one that was actually dropped yeah. almost intercepted but it ended up being the same the secondary for uh holy cross has showed up tonight and and done a great job with their responsibilities in, in keeping the score at zero and uh, of course uh the buttons got a turnover deep in uh holy cross territory then on the very next play after the muff punt they turn it over right here yeah and again looking at the physicality of the game and, and, and how, again, Central Catholic's getting ready to score right there, and they cough up the football. So it's been one of those games where, you know, there's probably going to be the last person with the football that's going to win this thing, Bobby. What do you see? How do you settle the team down? You've been in the locker room many times. They're fired up. They're hitting hard. You're seeing signs of execution but not consistent execution. Right. Well, you don't want to take away their aggressiveness. You know, a lot of these penalties are mental uh, in terms of uh, the offsides and stuff like that. Uh, I think it, it, you just keep focusing on the fact, hey, keep doing what we do, keep working on what we practice all week, uh, and, and stay away from the stupid penalties. You know, if you see your teammate getting into something, uh, because this is an emotional ball game, you want to pull them back uh, and get them back with us and, and make sure that we're – but you don't want to take away the emotion. Right. The emotion is – the passion is what kills. And, uh, you know, you, ca you can't fear the Reaper in a game like this, man. you got to keep playing, and, and, and the, the game's going to fall where the game's going to fall at the end of this thing. All right, uh, Gabe Farias will be on the sidelines when we return. We have a very special guest joining us at the uh, break as we will uh, continue from Alamo Stadium with more of the halftime show in just a moment. You are watching the high school football showcase in the 2018 Holy Bowl presented by John Wayne Service Company on KCWX-TV. Back here at Alamo Stadium, great crowd on hand for the 2018 Holy Bowl. First time in 
five years that these two teams have collided on the gridiron, and it's a scoreless physical first half as we head to the sideline. Gabe Farias has a very special guest. That's right. You know, Bobby, we appreciate the sponsors that, that dedicate themselves and really support what we do here, high school football, high school basketball, high school baseball. I've got one of our sponsors here, Dr. Danny Kellum. He owns Kellum Family Medicine, also the owner of KellumConnectMD.com, one of the sponsors of the uh, Saturday night game of the week on KCWX. Dr. Kellum, thank you so very much for joining the halftime program. Thank you, Gabe. Thanks for having me here. I, I got the first question I need to ask you. I've got a rash like right here. Can you can you see what? Yes. No. Okay. No. Uh, anyways, no. Seriously, though, thank you so very much for for supporting high school sports. Um, you, you know, and you understand the importance of of you know supporting these kids making sure that these kind of games can go on the air you know the community importance of doing this talk about your sponsorship with uh with uh saturday night high school football you know we're blessed enough to be asked to be a part of that sponsorship and you know it's something we really believe in as a community-based business we think it's important to really promote these young athletes being a um lucky enough to play sports really throughout my high school and then college i really understand the benefits and life lessons that occur between these lines and so if we have everybody an opportunity to or if we can get everybody to have an opportunity to have that through their lifetime i think it sets them up for success in more ways than we can ever imagine and you talk about your time uh at in high school it was at central catholic you were a uh, uh a, a wonderful high school basketball player. You played and won a state championship for the Buttons. This Holy Cross Central Catholic rivalry was non-existent for the last five years. It's back. Talk about what it means to a Central alum, how important this rivalry means to the community. You know, back for us when we were in school, this is one of the biggest games that we would uh, face every year. You know, we certainly respected them, but really wanted uh, to take it to them every time we played. It was kind of sad that we saw that go away, but I'm really glad it it's, it seems to be thriving with all the people that are here, and hopefully Central will take it to them like we used to. Well, I tell you what, would you have expected anything less in this first half, a very competitive first half between two very proud schools? Absolutely, and you know what? They are not going to let one get over on the other, and so they're going to be fighting hard through the rest of this this game. You know, one of the interesting services that you offer at Kellum Family Medicine, Kellum, uh, Kellum Family Medicine is KellumConnectMD.com. It's an online virtual opportunity for people who, A, don't have insurance, and, B, don't want to leave their home or office or even backyard or anywhere to visit a medical professional. Talk about Kellum Connect MD. Kellum Connect MD is an online teleservice that we have that creates a face-to-face -face medical visit for acute illnesses, coughs, colds, sore throat rashes, things like that, and allows people from the convenience of their home, office, um, backyard in some cases to, to meet with the doctor face-to-face, -face, get a diagnosis, get medications in a very convenient, simple way. Okay, I've got a, another question for you. I just got texted from a couple of buddies of mine, Jesse and John. They say I look like Fluffy in this shirt. I, I don't know why I'm so self-conscious of it. Do I look like Gabriel Iglesias in the shirt, yes or no? Uh, you're hard to miss, Gabe. That's for sure. That's an awful blue shirt that you got That's on. That's an awful blue shirt. And secondly, guys, I don't know if you know this or not, but Dr. Kellum is my personal care physician. And when I passed out earlier of heat exhaustion, he actually brought me back. Thank you so very much for doing that, by the way. Yeah, but I will never do mouth-to-mouth -mouth on you again as long as we live. <laughs> yeah, I can hear you, Bobby. I, I wanted to hear the story about the game-winning shot in the state championship. Yeah, Bobby wants to talk about that game-winning shot that everybody talks about. It wasn't a game-winning shot. Let me set the stage. It was the fourth overtime. All right. Uh, Dr. Kellum gets fouled with either little or no time left, goes to the free throw line. Remember, it's a one and one back then. There's no two shots. Goes to the free throw line, down by two, with the crowd going nuts, and he drills them both, nothing but net pressure at its highest dr kellum talk about that moment oh wow yeah that's something i'll never forget that was that was exciting you know we were fighting hard through that game we got fouled very luckily at the end of that that uh, fourth overtime and just went to the foul line and just prayed to god and just <laughs> <laughs> sing a thousand times before and they went in and we went on to win and it's been something that's really been a big difference in my life you know we, we talked to carlos enrico who's been a long mainstay at central catholic you got to play for a guy coach joe cortez who to say he's a legend is an understatement talk about your experience with coach cortez at central catholic you know coach cortez was one of the greatest influences in my life and all the success that i have i can contribute to him and my father and the and the things that they've really taught us and so you know, I, I don't know where a lot of us would be without that experience that we had. And the preparation that we've had through him really set the stage for things like those game-winning free throws. Coach is a wonderful man. He's doing well, hopefully. Um, and he is more than a, a legend. 
Awesome. And the, and the website again to visit Kellum, well, I'll just say KellumConnectMD.com for all acute illnesses. If you need to see a doctor, you don't want to leave your home or office, KellumConnectMD.com. Very simple, very convenient, very easy way, insurance or not, to get your acute illnesses taken care of. All right. Prediction for the second half? Central's going to take it to him. Imagine that. All right, guys, here you go. Dr. Kellum, thank you so very much. My pleasure. Thanks for having me, Gabe. All right. All right, spoken like a true Central alum. Thank you, Dr. Kellum, as uh, we will uh, be back to Alamo Stadium in just a moment and show you uh, uh, really kind of the story of this game, uh, a couple of big turnovers. But we'll take a break and be back with more of the High School Football Showcase presented by John Wayne Service Company on KCWX-TV. Welcome back to Alamo Stadium as we continue with the 2018 Holy Bowl. Bobby Stossenberg along with Andy Skelton. And, well, the turnovers were really the key in the first half. Central, on their first drive, they had a chance right here, Andy. And, again, Central Catholic, you know, they're, they're playing this 3-4 defense, and they were going to the hole one too many times there. And, again, the secondary, we've said it 100 times, they've been showing up on time, and so far it's been paying big, big, big dividends for the Holy Cross Knights and putting this game where it's at right now with no score. And then later on, after a muffed punt by Holy Cross, another opportunity blown by Central Catholic. And here comes the physicality inside out here. we got two defenders putting, biting the ball, getting the ball out. And, again, a testament to how these kids are getting after it. And there's a fight, dog fight going on under that pile right there. I can guarantee you they're biting and scratching. Uh, and Holy Cross did come up with the football. Gibby Garza was supposed to get the ball a lot tonight for Central. That hasn't happened. So as we look at second half adjustments, that, that seems to be one that's pretty obvious for Central Catholic. They need to get him the football. He's their most explosive offensive player. Right, and they're going to have to try to do that in a way that gets the ball out. So far, I think where the success has been happening is outside the tackle. Uh, and, and there's a bunch of different ways you could do that offensively, but they definitely need to get him somehow involved in their offense. For Holy Cross, uh, like I said, Silas, their quarterback, did a lot better on that last drive. I think he's starting to get comfortable in this particular game. Any adjustments that you see from them and how he can build on what he did on that last drive? Well, you heard it from Coach uh, Harrison in the, in the, when he was going in at halftime. Hey, they, they're starting to run the football halfway well but in between the guards right there. I think they're going to come back and want to do that. And then also uh, making sure that, that Solis still has the vision to see downfield on his half sprint outs and things like that. But hopefully they don't, they don't get into a second and a third and 35. You know, that, that's a hard offense to call uh, and to fight back from. So they need to start eliminating those penalties. Uh, like we said, not the emotion, not the aggressiveness, but the penalties need to stop. All right, folks, it should be a great second half. I think we're going to get some scoring. Yes, and there is overtime in high school football, so we're going to have an opportunity. The Holy Bowl will be settled tonight as they are playing for the first time 
in five years. The 47th overall. It's been a fun, physical game as uh, we will take a break. And when we return, uh, we are going to go down to the sideline with Coach Mike Santiago as we will wrap up the halftime show and just right, uh, right when we return from the break. All right, folks, back with more of the High School Football Showcase presented by John Wayne Service Company on KCWX TV. Bobby Stotzenberg along with Andy Skelton and Gabe Farias from the Holy Bowl, Alamo Stadium. As you see the Central Catholic buttons trying to get warmed up. It's not, that's not hard to do on this humid evening. I mean, it is a sweater out there. 82 degrees. The rain's not supposed to come till midnight, so I think we think we're going to get through this one. Still 60% chance of rain, but now the humidity creeping up to 71%. We hope to talk to Coach Mike Santiago. We Trying to get all the crew in uh, play, place, rather. All right. All right, uh, Andy. Uh, well, doesn't take a lot to get warmed up. I think we're going to see a better half of football because we saw signs from both offenses that they can move the football. When Holy Cross is going to get the ball, if I'm not mistaken, start the second half. So I think that they're going to come out and they're going to try to go to work on what it is they worked on at the halftime adjustments in there. Coach, Coach Harrison was adamant about the fact that they're going to have to start moving the football. They're going to have to start controlling. That was one of their keys to victory up front for their offense. They were going to have to come off the ball, uh, be able to run the football between the tackles. And he knew that was going to be a challenge coming into this tonight. Uh, but they're going to have to start controlling the tempo, controlling the line of scrimmage, uh, and, and keep the defense off the field just a little bit because, I mean, they've been on the field a lot tonight. There you see the uh, Central Catholic buttons coming through their uh, snake. And the Holy Cross night, they ball. Everybody has the blow up breakthroughs now. What? Remember the old paper breakthroughs? Yeah, the, the old paper ones that cheerleaders spent all week painting in five seconds for us to demolish. That was yeah. those were fun, and they were inexpensive. <laughs> <laughs> that's a big old snake they're running through right there. That's a high dollar item. All right, here we go, folks, with the second half of action from Alamo Stadium. This is one of the better crowds I've seen at Alamo Stadium in some time. And they are loud and they are rowdy. You saw the, both school sections with the students, and they're having a great time. And that's what this is about, man. You know, in a rivalry like this, and these kids, they don't know this rivalry because they weren't in high school. So they're getting to reignite something and be a part of something that, that hopefully is going to last for several years to come and maybe into their children's uh, schooling. So uh, it's loud, it's rowdy, they're rambunctious, and it's, it's fun to be a part of this thing. All right, the uh, Knights huddled up for their return team. They'll send Ethan Lara and Adam De La Garza back. As we want to remind you, don't forget to vote for who you think will be the John Wayne player of the game for tonight's game. If you get the winner correct, you can win a very cool player of the game cap and are automatically registered for a $25,000 home makeover. Go get your vote in right now at johnwayne.com. We also want to remind you about sports tonight. That's coming up immediately after tonight's game here on KCWX. San Antonio's only nightly 30-minute sportscast with highlights from this game in college football, including A&M and Clemson, as the kick will go into the end zone, and they're coming out with it uh -oh. and faking the reverse and some room, but returned out to the 18-yard line. That was a interesting move there by Adam De La Garza to come out 
from the end zone on the return. Yeah, he's two yards deep in his own end zone. I don't know about that, but kid's trying to make a play in a game like this and, and decides to bring it out, and he was already out, and it was too late. <laughs> so he had to go with it. Well, and they also had a little reverse set up. Yeah, they had a little uh, trick or race and a little smoke and mirror happening on the other side. Our big time down at uh, A&M uh, tonight. We won't uh, tease you with any score update on that, but Clemson and A&M catch all the highlights on sports tonight after the game. Here's Gibby Salas. First offensive possession. Lada, the running back to his left, and it's a zone read keep. Salas has some room. One of the rare times he's kept it, and he is close to a first down on the first play of the second half. Well, there's one of your halftime adjustments right there, Bobby. They're going to get Salas involved in the running game. All right, he cross faces. They bring uh, Big Collage of Michaels across the formation. The linebackers vacate the area, and he's able to pick up a good chunk of yardage for the first down. So that is a positive thing coming out after halftime for the Holy Cross Knights. Knights had a good drive to end the first half, but they stalled again on, on a penalty. As they go twins right, Central showing blitz here against Salas. He takes the snap and will look to his right and then throw along the sidelines where it is caught and a big hit at the uh, 34 yard line but Roman Garza holds on yeah Stephen Stephen Carrasco came up and introduced himself at the end of that play after that five yard gain it's the physicality of this game continues great pitch great catch right here uh, to set up uh, five yards here to go on second down and a pick and pull collision too I like the physicality of this game. This has been fun to watch. It really is. I mean, this is old school. Backyard brawl, baby. Yeah. That's what it is. Fighting football. Second down and five here for the uh, Holy Cross Knights. And Central offsides, to say the least. And Silas will throw that one away. How in the world is there not a flag on that? <laughs> that was either the best time blitz I've ever seen or somebody missed something. Yeah, that surprised me. Holy Cross coaches aren't real happy about that. I mean, they're definitely. Oh, that well, and and the quarterback, uh, the center snapped the ball once he saw the offsides. Yeah, that was encroachment at least. Yeah. Well, and that's what the center's supposed to do when he sees that movement come across, snap it, and nobody else was ready because it was supposed to be a free play. It's third and five here, after a bizarre non-call there, and Salas. Will hand the ball off to Lada, and he's going to get the first down anyways. Crosses the 40 and out to the 42-yard line. There's that running game getting established right there. You know, just being patient with it, being patient with it here. There's a little off-tackle play right here. Delay. Getting into the secondary right there. Putting his head down, picking up big chunky yardage for the first down. I like the way Lada finishes he his does. run. His shoulder pads are down. His pad level is down. He finishes the run, falling forward, and that's what you want out of your running backs, picking up another one or two just on the way he falls. He ain't the biggest guy in the world either. No, he, he's got, he, but he's got great leverage. He was, he was built in a hitting position. <laughs> Ten minutes to go here in the third, just underway. Gibby Salas sends a man in motion and gives to Lada again, and this time he is stuffed but breaks the tackle. Now heads to the left and a hard run into central territory and near a Holy Cross first down. Well, John Mont Montalongo shows up, but he couldn't hold on. A great job. We just talked about pad level, and he rips the ball out and spins off. Path of least resistance right there takes him to the outside. Great drive going right here, Bobby. Holy Cross coming out after half. They're on fire. They're, they've got some adjustments, and uh, looks like they've tried to clean up some things. First down and 10 here for the Holy Cross Knights. First drive of the second half. Silas will throw. Here comes the pressure. Uh -oh. Got to throw it away, not going to do it. He couldn't get the arm cock to throw it away, and he takes a huge sack. I don't know if they're trying to Back run the at screen. the 32. Looked like they're running the screen, Bobby. He's trying to give ground, give ground. He got to a point of no return here. Elijah Michael wanting the football there, but he gets to a certain point. He couldn't even get it back to the line of scrimmage. It would have been a illegal grounding call. And sometimes you just got to stop, fall, and, and cut your losses. You got to make that decision sooner. I think when he saw the pressure, that's when you just throw it away. The kid's just playing football, man, and sometimes it happens so fast that the old mind doesn't catch up with the legs. I've had that happen a time or two. No doubt. Play clock down to one. Will they get it off? 
No, they won't. Did they call a timeout? They were though? trying to call a timeout. Was I it? think Holy Cross got a timeout. So a timeout on the field. 8.33 to go. They did take the timeout, though. Timeout, Holy Cross, still scoreless in the third. You're watching the High School Football Showcase presented by John Wayne Service Company on KCWX-TV. Well, that ended up not being a timeout by Holy Cross, but they get stopped on second down. Now third and 35 for the Knights. And they're just going to hand the ball off to Lada. And they're going to punt and try to play defense. So a promising drive, but that big sack, Andy, is really what uh, destroyed any chance for Holy Cross. They had a great drive going. They had the first four plays that were positive for them. And again, your quarterback, makes a bad decision and doesn't get rid of the football and, and puts you in a position that's just tough to climb out of. But they did make progress. They did make some adjustments at halftime. So hopefully uh, they're going to be able to come back here and defense is going to make a stop after this punt. Salas uh, 10 for 5 passing tonight for 35 yards. But it's the sacks that have hurt as he will punt this one away. Gomez in return position. But the kick goes straight to the sidelines. And again, Central Catholic will have great field position. So Nick Chavez will come out. He is 10 of 19 passing tonight for 83 yards. He's completed 53%, but most of his passing has been underneath and the uh, are shorter routes, Andy. And now for Central Catholic, if they could just get some running game going, I think that would help Nick Chavez out a whole lot. Yeah, they need to start either doing that or getting back to the position game and the passing. Either way, that's been effective. But it, yeah, the running game's definitely gonna help. Uh, but I mean, it's one of those deals that, that, that Holy Cross defense had a lot to say about that, the way they're playing the game as well here. So we'll see when they're coming out in their spread offense here. And so pistol formation and a fake on the toss. Chavez rolls right, avoids the rush, fires it downfield and is caught and out of bounds at the 32 yard line with the uh, reception is uh, Gomez, Charlie Gomez, the tight end. He was, hard to, he was hard to pick up that time by the defense. He's coming, you'll see it here. He's coming from a backside drag, gets lost behind the linebackers. Great throw by Chavez to lead him there and, and pick up a, a big chunk of yardage and another button first down. So Central has three turnovers tonight, two of them in the red zone. They'll try to end that streak right now as Hank Hernandez is the running back behind Chavez in the pistol set. Ball at the 31, flares it out. And it is caused by Garza. Garza tries to get around the edge and get something. About three there for Gibby Garza. And that's good the, pursuit, though. That's what we're talking about. This is Central Catholic bread and butter right here, Bobby. This is their quick game. They throw it out in the flat and try to get what they can get out there. Uh, great containment that time by Adam De La Garza to minimize that on a four-yard gain. And they're still hitting. They're flying around. That's, that's awesome. First drive of the second half for Central Catholic, and we're already midway through this third quarter of play still scoreless the buttons about to uh, reach the red zone once again as uh, Chavez will go under center this time and he's going to hand the ball off to Hernandez who fumbles the ball and it is going to be recovered by Gibby Garza that, I give credit that time to Holy Cross front six front seven right there they played right here look stepping up right here Boom, coming in, putting the head on the football, swiping. Rip, they're trying to rip and pull. 
That's a coach technique, and they're getting the ball out right there. And Hernandez comes out. He had the earlier fumble that they lost. He fumbled it again. And so Coach uh, Mike Santiago says, come to the sideline, young man, and uh, Davids Meyer will come in as the running back. Can't do that. Third down and 16 now for the buttons. Chavez looks across the middle, has a man, and it's overthrown. Intended for Gibby Garza, who had beaten the defender, but uh, Chavez just misfires on what should have been a touchdown. And part of the misfire has to do with the defense. They run a little twist with their linebacker right here, and he had number 42 right in his face as he was trying to throw the ball right there. Uh, Baron Rivas was in his face, so that ball was, he had guys in his face, he was trying to throw it, so he kind of overthrew that ball. He's trying to get rid of it before he got his head taken off. Brings up fourth down. Every time either of these teams gets any momentum offensively, they have a real negative play that sets them back. Well, I'll tell you, it's, it's the nature of this game, and it's going both ways, both sides. And, again, you got to embrace the game and let's play, you know, so that's what these guys are doing. So the uh, buttons are going to punt, a low liner, and Lada's going to let this one bounce. It will go into the end zone for the touchback, and the Holy Cross Knights will start at their own 20. Next week, we'll be right back here at Alamo Stadium, and I am real anxious to see the Wagner Thunderbirds. They are tied at the half with Judson, 14-14. to Next week, they get Sam Houston in the district opener. First time they've ever played Sam Houston, and that is a very, very natural east side rivalry. A lot of the parents from Wagner went to Sam went Houston. To Sam Houston right. So uh, the first time those two will ever play, and we will have it for you next Saturday night as we'll be back here at the rock pile first down and 10 for holy cross at the 20 yard line salas hands it off to lada trying to get the edge breaks a tackle and gets a couple of yards as he ran away from the blitz which was coming up the middle well i mean yeah he went the path the least resistant but he did have a, a, a a backside pull in lineman that was his lead blocker. He might have been a little bit patient. There he is trying to get behind him. Gave up on it, tried to get outside there, but still his effort, Bobby, the way he runs, he's spinning, rumbling and bumbling, second and third effort. He actually picked up two, almost three yards on that. Jay Juarez did an outstanding job there for Central Catholic of getting off a block to make that tackle. So second down and eight for the uh, Holy Cross Knights. Judson now a 21-14 lead over Wagner in the third. Salas. Shotgun snap, fakes the handoff and keeps it for maybe one more yard. Again, the button run defense strong. Yeah, it was a good job that time. Nobody was fooled on that particular play. Uh, Carlos Reyes, number 23 for the button, snipped it out. And again, they're trying to get Salas into the run game. That's one of their adjustments they coming out of the, of the halftime there. Trying so to get third some- down here for the... Uh, Holy Cross Knights. Third and seven with 4.12 to go here in the third quarter. Salas, deep drop, sets up and fires it deep, and he has a man, and that one (laughs) is caught for the first down. An outstanding grab by Andres Ortiz as he jumped at just the right time. Five foot, all five foot, six of them getting up in the air to grab that one, Bobby. Great pitch, great catch. Again, that's what they do on, what do you guys are going to do on third and long? You know, they stepped back, took a shot. Great big chunk of yardage. Now they got the ball in Central Catholic territory here. A 30-yard gain there for the first down. And he got behind two Central Catholic defenders on that. Knights to the 45. Salas will hand it off to Lada. Breaks a tackle. Breaks another. Really tough. Tell you what Run he, there, <laughs> Gabe. Gabe, but Gabe, what happened down to you? I there, just bud? got attacked by a Holy Cross truly. She didn't mean to do it. She kind of did a double backflip into my left hammy. I'm gonna go find Dr. Kellum right now because <laughs> I think I got a torn hammy. But guys, I, I know they just there's a break on the field. And uh, is it just me? And the message down here from the coaching staff, the entire. Uh, third quarter has been, or excuse me, from the Central Catholic coaching staff is you are letting this team stay in the game. Something is going to happen. You have got to make something happen. And I kind of agree with them, guys. They are letting Holy Cross stay in this football game. 
and I, I'm anxious to see how this thing ends. Uh, I'm going to put some ice on my hammy and throw it back to you guys, okay? Hey, Gabe, I, I got to say, if you were a cheerleader, I'm, I'm thinking – you're probably not a flyer, but more likely a base. Definitely a base. On the base. That's that's the definitely base. for sure. <laughs> yeah. I, I, would you – I'd like to see him attempt the flying, though. Ooh. <laughs> Ew. Speaking of <laughs> – Yeah, you just hear some screaming. That's all you'd hear. We got cramping up on both the field and the sidelines uh, from Central Catholic as they're stretching guys out everywhere. And that was expected with this humidity here tonight. No doubt. You know, and, and – and Gabe brings up an excellent point. You know, if you're Central Catholic, don't let these guys hang around. If you know you're, if you think you're the superior team up there, but I guarantee you one thing, I'm going to bring another perspective into it too. A lot of it has to do with why Holy Cross is still hanging around. It's because Holy Cross is still hanging around. It's the way they're playing defense. It's the way they're flying around. It's the way they're changing up their defensive looks, their defensive fronts, their defensive stunts. Uh, and it's given, quite honestly, it's given Central Catholic some problems. Well, Cramped up there is uh, Sean Brown. He goes by Bo, and Bo knows cramps now because uh, <laughs> he had to really stretch that hammy. He gave the training crew is coming over. They can stretch your hammy now. I'm just very grateful he was here. Second and eight now for the Knights. Still scoreless here. They try to get this drive into scoring position. Salas. Fakes the jet sweep, and then he'll follow. And well played by the buttons, though. And Salas, not much doing. They're flying around in there. This is a new formation we hadn't seen out of Holy Cross this time. They bring a big old number 90 in, uh, Richard Orta, D lineman, to try to be another blocker there. But great pursuit by uh, 23, Carlos Reyes, sniffing out the football. And he ran underneath the block that time. Great inside out pursuit. We've called his name before already tonight. And he. He's got a good nose for the football. You know, really, the lead blocker there needs to turn back on him, though, and then Salas would have had some room, but he didn't see it. Right, he was there too quick and, and didn't, you know, flew right by him. So third down and eight now for the uh, Holy Cross Knights. And Salas takes a snap and rolls right. Looks, fires, and overshoots his man as uh, Ortiz had a step on the defender again. And we've seen that tonight out of Holy Cross. They have that half sprint out, and that's what they use on third down to try to get that first down. I mean, they had, a, they had him wide open right there. Andres Ortiz was would have caught the ball probably right at the first down marker there, but the ball a little bit off the mark by Salas. Brings up fourth down. So fourth down and punt time for the uh, Holy Cross Knights. Salas is the quarterback, so if there's going to be a fake and a punt, he would be him throwing the ball, but he's going to kick this one away. It's a low liner that Gomez has picked up at and bobbles at the 11-yard line, now looking for room, and heads to the left to the 19-yard line where he has stopped. That is uh, Eladio Gomez on the uh, return. Pretty good coverage that time, getting downfield. Rugby-style punt that time, Bobby. That's not a bad decision to go ahead and put that ball on the ground and let it bounce around a little bit. And especially when you're on the other team's side of the field, that allows your coverage team to get down there and uh, doesn't allow for uh, any kind of uh, organized return by the buttons. And so it's uh, first down and 10 for the uh, Central Catholic buttons, and we're still scoreless at Alamo Stadium. And uh, these two teams still playing very, very hard as Chavez is going to throw. Fires it across the middle, and uh, he finds his man for the first down out to the 35-yard uh, line. And there's Gibby Garza into the offense, Bobby, like we talked about at halftime. Settles down in the middle hole here. Linebackers bail out. Good hit at the end here on the pick-and-pull collision. But enough for a uh, first down. For Central Catholic now, they're... Another first down here in the third quarter. Chavez back to pass, scrambles, now takes off and runs, and he will spin forward with a nice run of nine yards on the first down. So Nick Chavez you see right using here, the legs. We got three-man rush this time, so you have eight in coverage, so everybody bails out. So Garza decided to take it upon himself right there and try to go get the first down. He comes up just a little bit short. Of that first down there, there you see the first down marker. They're about a yard short of the first down. 
So second down and a yard for the Buttons. They still will stay out of the shot in the shotgun, and the running back is Davids Meyer. And Chavez, this may be a chance to throw downfield, and he'll drop back and throw. Has a man in the flat, and he drops it. <laughs> And uh, he had uh, his man, Charlie Gomez, wide open. The reason he was wide open, Bobby, is because that time Holy Cross was bringing outside linebackers here, the outside linebacker number 40. That's the guy that would have that guy. Nobody had to back out. Puts a lot of pressure on him. Good throw by Chavez. That was a Gomez great throw. just has to catch that one. Yeah, he took his eyes off it, a little focus and concentration. And he also had a lot of room to run had he held on to that. Yeah, that was the result of that blitz by the Holy Cross Knights. Likely they're going to keep it on the ground here, and they will run the quarterback sneak, the wedge blocking up front by the big guys, and they push their way forward for a first down at the 45. There's nothing wrong with that. As far as quarterback sneak, that's old school right there. Ball at the 45-yard line, and it's first down. We're down to 43 seconds to go in the third. Still scoreless. Central Catholic, I, only their second possession of this second half. Chavez to throw, lots of time. They're going to fire it deep. Has a man, but it's just overthrown. And again, they were looking for Gibby Garza. If he, I think if he keeps running right here, Bobby, he might have been a little bit better off here. But as you look, the ball thrown, and he kind of stops. At three uh, Holy Cross defenders in the neighborhood, but he had him beat. Looked like he kind of just was not running full speed there I'm not sure he thought Chavez would get it to him but it was really a pretty good throw he was behind the coverage right there so second down and 10 now Central Catholic clock stops with 24 seconds here in the third Nick Chavez shotgun snap fires it and it is caught at the midfield strike and to the 47-yard line goes Doug Karam near a Central Catholic first down. They're taking advantage of that loose coverage out here over to the right side in the flat, and that's where they've been pretty successful this evening. Good throw, but, I mean, spot on, right on time. Pitch and catch like that, that is a tough route to defend, even if the, if the defensive back's on time. So that was a result of great execution. That ends the third. Still scoreless. You're watching the High School Football Showcase presented by John Wayne Service Company on KCWX-TV. Back at Alamo Stadium, start of the fourth quarter, switching directions in Central Catholic at the 48 of Holy Cross, and a third down and three. As they're going to throw it out there to Davidsmeyer and very well defended. Chavez drops it off to Davidsmeyer, but the pursuit immediately there for the Holy Cross Knights. And now Central, one for eight on third down conversions tonight. Great job. They bring a Mike linebacker off the edge there, kind of give a different look. And number 44, Andy Gomez of Holy Cross, does a great job of sniffing it out and dropping it for a, a minimal gain there to bring up yet another fourth down. Funny, during the interview with uh, Carlos Enrico, he said, this game should have been played at Central. There's no way they could have fit this crowd <laughs> into the uh, stadium at Central Catholic. No way. Uh, Coach Enrico, awesome. And so the uh, buttons are going to punt. Good pass from center. Good rush. He gets it away. And that is Lada. That looked like it hit one of the Holy Cross uh, Knights. But was he blocked into the football there? There was a collision and the ball being touched at the same time. Now they're saying. Referee did throw the beanbag. Here's the replay. It hit him in the back, Bobby. Boom. Oh, it hit him in the helmet. Yep. It 
Jacob Doinks Arguello. off of Jacob Arguello's helmet. That's a turnover. Another muff punt. Officially, that's what it is. Right. That's how it's going to be scored. Wow. Went right off his helmet. How about that? Uh, that's. It's kind of hard to know where you're at when you're that far down the field and the punt is in the air. You got, But you got to be mindful of that, and that's a big mistake by the Knights. Buttons get the break here. And so they will uh, go to the ground here and hand it off to Hernandez, who gets to the 20-yard line. Central just almost has to convert now if they're going to make something of this. They've had the breaks tonight as we have a injury timeout. So with 10.48 to play, timeout on the field. Still scoreless. You're watching the High School Football Showcase presented by John Wayne Service Company on KCWX-TV. Central now first down and goal at the 10-yard line. Give it off to Hernandez, and he has a good run down inside the five-yard line for the Buttons. The play before, Doug Karam caught it and made it to the 10-yard line. It's first and goal, and then this run by Hernandez. Great job by the bodies up front for Central Catholic, paving the way. Again, running backs falling forward here. I'm with you, Bobby. I think Central's going to make something right here if they're going to make it. Second and goal. Buttons fans on their feet. I formation, Chavez under center. Hands it to Hernandez again, and he stopped as he got bear hugged by Richard Orta. Orta's a big kid. He's 6'4", 230, comes flying in there. Knocks the, they, they've, they've already, they knocked the pile back. They've already made a stop. Once this game down there in the same neighborhood, balls on the same one yard line. Well, Central was in this position before. And I look for him to keep it on the ground right here as, as Gabe. Well, they've but run. he has just put in my ear because, yeah, why they, throw it? Well, they've been running that quarterback sneak effectively as well. well they're going to plug the A gap here. They got Chavez under center. There's the sneak. Wedge block pushing no. his way. No, sir. No. Did not get in. And now Mike Santiago, I don't think he kick a field goal here, even though. A field goal might be enough know. to win this particular game. You, I mean, in a 0-0 zero, zero game, baby, you ain't going to kick it's it. It's closer than an extra point. Kick it. I'm just saying, man. Uh, three points. A point wins it. I mean, it's. Uh, this could very easily be a 3 to nothing game. But the nose of the football. But what do I know? Ortiz under center again. Quarterback sneak again. I think. Did he get in? Yeah, the referee over He is in. He got pushed at the last moment. Touchdown, Central Catholic. Well, what do I know? How to kick the field goal. Coach Santiago knows these kids, knows these guys up front right here. Good push. Comes off to the right side there right at the end. Has a little help right there by Gibby Garza pushing him in the end zone. Used to be you couldn't do that, but now, now you can push your guy in. Franco Carrido will uh, try the extra point. Snap down. The kick is good. 7 to nothing Central. 8-21 to play in the game. You're watching the High School Football Showcase presented by John Wayne Service Company on KCWX-TV.
Well, last week when Reagan beat Brennan, a muff punt was the key play. A week later, the muff punt is the key play in this one. A one-yard run by Chavez on the sneak to give Central the lead as Holy Cross will fake the reverse on the kickoff, some room to return, and out to the 28-yard line go the Knights. That was Adam De La Garza as Holy Cross will take over, trailing now 7-0. But a muff punt two weeks in a row. Special teams, Bobby, uh, can't it reiterate that enough that that's that third part of the, or one third of the game that people don't ever hardly pay attention to, and it pays big dividends. And that wasn't your average muff punt. No, that it, was it hit his him chance. Off the, yeah. It hit him off the helmet. I want to say divine intervention, but not in a game like this. I'm not going to say that. But uh, <laughs> nobody. It is. It is a holy pick bowl. Favorites, I don't think. But it, it is a holy bowl. First down and ten. Holy Cross. As they're going to hand it off to Lada, nothing doing there. As Wagner's pulled within seven now. Judson 28 and Wagner 21 in the Hammer Bowl. We've got the Hammer Bowl and the Holy Bowl going on the same night. Carlos Reyes for the buttons again, stepping up in there. And big old number 60 coming in there too, plugging the hole. Matt Pastrano doing a great job. Nowhere to go that time, second down and 10. 7.46 and counting. All three timeouts for both teams. As Gibby Silas brings up the Knights with twin receivers to the left. Short side of the field there. Second and 10. Fakes the handoff and keeps it with room. 35 40. Sideline and great speed to pick up the first down. And once Gibby Silas had a head of steam, he showed some pretty good wills. Yeah, Gibby Silas, you know, 5 foot 11 frame. He's not a small kid. He gets up in there to fake the boot. Or it's basically a boot run. Quarterback pulls it down. I think that was going to be a design run all the way. They ran the. The defensive backs for uh, the, C the Central Catholic Buttons off. So there, he had room to run once he got the edge there. 19-yard uh, pickup there for the first down. And, again, it just continue the ex – if you're Holy Cross, you're doing – you're executing well. Just don't go just backwards. Yeah. Don't go backwards. No negative plays and you'll be okay. As the Knights move uh, left to right, trailing by seven. And Central Catholic came across – they blew the whistle that time. That's good. Central Catholic will be penalized five so yards. Central Catholic shooting their foot, self in the foot right here. Bobby's setting up first down and five. Now you got some options as offensive coordinator. We have the Holy Holy Cross coaches right here in the booth next to us, and they're scribbling out stuff on the paper, so yeah. they're working on something. Coach Polo Bateo next to us. He is the baseball coach at Holy Cross. He also was the baseball coach at Central at one time. Salas will fake again, keep it going right, and Good turns cut. it upfield to get a yard. He could have lost yardage there, and he does manage one. And it's going to be second down and four for the Holy Cross Knights. Trying to, they're trying to get him involved somehow in the run game, Bobby, looks like. and uh, He was dead to rights on that one. Central Catholic seven, Holy Cross zero. There we go. We got it right. Seven to nothing. Holy Cross. Second down, low snap. Hand off to Lada. Flags down as he gets close. Be another free to a Knights first down. They are changing up the snap count. Looks like Bobby Nett's giving Central Catholic D line of their fits, man. They got to watch that football. It's been a long game. That they're getting down to the end of this thing here. They got to maintain their composure. <laughs> giving Holy Cross a first down here on the penalty. That's going to be enough. First down and 10, 6.30. Both of these teams are really patient. They're not afraid of that clock ticking down. We haven't seen anything too crazy in terms of attempting something to get back in the game. But Holy Cross known for their trick plays. Lada fakes the handoff to him, and now Salas will keep it, and he runs left to the 35. That has worked a couple of times where they didn't run Gibby Salas in the first half. They're running him here in the second. They're pulling two guys to the right side. It's a fake all the way right there. They pull another 
They release a lineman outside in space here. I don't know that he necessarily made the right read. He just be no. managed to beat the defensive end. But they faked the they faked the defense, and he had space to run. So that's what they're trying to create for him. The uh, end there for Central Catholic, uh, Ryan Garcia had, was turned the wrong way. He got his body turned in instead of parallel to the line of scrimmage. Right, he was chasing the, def the, the offensive backs. Second down and two now. Lotta right up the middle gets the first down and turns forward to the 28. Great patience by the by the Knights right here. Their offense, they're, they're clicking. Again, they're running it down Main Street right here, which is what Coach Harrison referred to at halftime. Uh, and again, they're running that little cross trap action right there, pulling the backside lineman that, that gives a straight ahead down path. Great job getting the shoulder pads down, falling forward. This has been a really good drive here and patient. They don't need to do anything silly right here. They just need to keep doing what they're doing. Seven to nothing, but five minutes and eight seconds and counting here in the ball game. And now a timeout by Central Catholic. Seven to nothing buttons. You're watching the high school football showcase presented by John Wayne Service Company on KCWX TV. Coach Mike Santiago took a timeout to try to rest perhaps the buttons and make an adjustment here. Holy Cross on the move trying to tie the game. Salas, the quarterback. Yeah, Richard Lotta. Alta. He's in the game, Bobby. Number 90. Roll left, and he's in trouble, and a sack. A huge defensive play there for the buttons. Carlos Reyes coming in there, takes advantage of the fact that they were trying to get the ball. At number 90 he's in there, like I was saying. They were trying to get the ball. On a play action, sprint out to him. Great job by Reyes pulling up the quarterback. Nothing doing. That is a, uh, that's been the story for Holy Cross. Really, one step forward and two steps back. And In their been, case, uh, five yards forward and ten yards back. They've been doing pretty good on this drive. That was the first time they went backwards, but you're exactly right. Well, they're going to run out of patience here at some point. They have three timeouts left, but it's getting uh, late. Second down and 20. Salas hands to Lada. He finds some room. Nice cut and a nice finish of the run all the way to the Central Catholic 27 yard line. Pickup of 11. I'd keep feeding him the rock right here, Bobby. He runs hard. Got his shoulder pads down. He's hard to find because he's not real tall. And they're, they're pulling two big old boys in there. They're trapping, running a little counter waggle scheme. Great job that time by Orta getting on his man and allowing a big gain there. Third down here for the. Uh, Holy Cross Knights. Tonight, they are two out of nine on third down conversions. Clock down to 344. Probably four down territory for Holy Cross. Salas, shotgun snap. Will drop it off, caught, but nothing doing there as they finally get the ball to Kali Michael Kalija, Kalija Michael rather. Carlos Reyes for the buttons had nothing doing. They, they spied him the whole way right here. It's a long field goal attempt here. And that's his responsibility, too, right in his line of sight. Gabe on the sidelines, a uh, very uh, good point that if Central kicks a field goal there, Holy Cross would be in position to tie. But now that they're down by seven, they're going to go for it on fourth down. Play clock down to five seconds. Salas takes the snap. Will throw this one to the end zone. Has a man and is caught. And they convert a fourth down with a touchdown. Ethan Lara 
a 26-yard touchdown for Holy Cross. They had 101 coverage out here, Bobby. They had everybody over to this side of the formation, 101 streak. Silas puts it out there. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Nice throw. An extra point can tie it. Or go for two. Or go for two. That's what I was thinking, too. I don't know. And Mike Harrison might be thinking it as well. And, Gabe, you and I have covered Holy Cross over the years. They are a roll-the-dice type of team. No doubt. The, hey, David versus Goliath, you're right. a lower classification in a non-district game it could hurt them down the road maybe not necessarily in making the playoffs but maybe in a seed rather hosting a, a first round game versus going to fort worth to have to play all saints so uh this has been everything and then some that i expected in this football game all right i think we missed some of that from gabe you talk about the humidity we have two <laughs> players cramping gabe's cramping two players are cramping it is very, very humid out there. Me up, guys. I actually said that report laying on my back. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're going to go for it here. They are going to go for it right here. I, I think so, you too. You know what? Hey, when you're when you're David and not Goliath, there's nothing to lose. You can't fear the Reaper, baby. You got Hey, take a shot right here. And, Fans and on their win. feet. Look at the Central Catholic. I know what I know. They're going for it. This is uh, definitely guts, my friends. This All is right. what you call guts. Going for two and maybe the win. <laughs> Holy Cross. They've been, won three straight. Central Catholic leads the overall series 35-11. to 11, But in the last 14 games, they're only eight and six against Holy Cross, and the Knights have won three straight. And they have a play for it right here. They take the snap. They hand a lot up, and he pushes his way in. Got it. What a finish by the little guy, Ethan Lada. He caught the touchdown, and he bangs his way in with a two-point conversion. Hey, student body street fight. Everybody push, get involved. Bam! Oh, what a hit. Wow, he, he just noted. barely got it across. <laughs> he ran over the linebacker. And so Holy Cross takes the lead 8-7 to seven with a two-point conversion. You're watching the High School Football Showcase presented by John Wayne Service Company on KCWX-TV. Wow. Well, we're going to try to take a look at that touchdown one more time. But that was a nine-play, 62-yard scoring drive for Holy Cross. I got Gibby Salas to Ethan Lada as we take a look. As the ball will go out of bounds on the kickoff. Let's finish with the uh, touchdown pass. Was it 15 or 25? We may have missed. No, it was 15. That is Augustine Barrera with the uh, reception. Augustine, 15, not 25. Augustine Barrera.
puts uh, Holy Cross ahead, or at least he got him within one, and there was uh, Lada that got him the lead with a two-point conversion. All right, now Holy Cross defense got a play right here. They've been playing all game long, so they got a hold. So my apologies, Augustine Barrera with the touchdown reception. Gibby Salas has stepped it up too as well. well we, we said he was going to have to, and that was one of our halftime deals. But they're getting late in the game here, Bobby, and you're seeing these kids laying around. It is tough out there. They have been battling, and it, 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 physically they are beat. These, a lot of these guys are going both ways, and they're starting to take their toll. Base. Out of bounds on the kicking team. Plus five from where it went out. All right, Plus so seven. Central's going to take the penalty five yards from where the ball went out of bounds. Let's go to Gabe. Let me tell you something. Two names. Two names. Franco Querido. He is a great field goal kicker for Central Catholic. He's got range from about 40 yards, maybe 45. He's got a big leg, very accurate. He's one of the better kickers this team has ever seen. Look for an exciting end to this one, guys. Back to you. Now Holy Cross takes a timeout. 2.42 to play. One-point lead for Holy Cross. You're watching the High School Football Showcase presented by John Wayne Service Company on KCWX-TV. Very unlikely we're going to overtime. I don't think there's much mathematical way. Eight to seven, Holy Cross. Central first and ten. Chavez back to pass. Throws complete and headed towards the sidelines. And will he get out of bounds? There's a big hit over there. They do get it to Gibby Garza. Also tonight, uh, th for a recap of all the area high school football action from uh, week two, tune in to Friday Night Blitz tonight at 11 here on KCWX. Jill Jelnick and Marcus Floyd will bring you the highlights, the big plays of the week, and much more. That's 11 o'clock tonight on KCWX TV after sports tonight, which follows our broadcast. 2.09 to go. The Holy Bowl, 8-7. Holy Cross with a lead. Chavez. Looks left, throws, has a man, but he couldn't catch up. Karam trying to get away from the defender there, and the ball's incomplete. That was great. Pretty good coverage that time by Adam De La Garza, stride for stride with him. They're trying to get a little wheel route down the sideline here. He did have help over the top as well here. Central, they, it's not necessarily all on this drive. They do have two timeouts, well, but have, I, I don't like their chances if they don't convert on this particular drive to try to win the well, game. Well, you got to understand the Holy Cross is a 3-4 defense. Right now they're sitting back in that 3-4. They're not bringing a whole lot of pressure. They're going to sit back and play in that zone. They've been real successful all night while they're sitting back in that zone coverage. There's a lot of dead space in that coverage, but they've been playing it pretty good. They're gonna and they're going to take a timeout. Timeout on the field. This is the High School Football Showcase presented by John Wayne Service Company on KCWX-TV.
Biggest third down of the game for the uh, Central Catholic Buttons. Third down and seven for Central Catholic. Chavez to throw. Sliding catch, no. It hit the turf. And Jared Toralva thought he had it. I think it's a little bit underthrown, Bobby, right here. Again, they're running just a three-man rush inside there. Uh, it it yeah. did hit the turf. Well, Central's going to put it all on this. That was good camera work on that replay right there. It was a pretty awesome look. They're going to put it all on this drive right here because they've burned the timeout, which means, in effect, Andy, if they don't get a first down here, they only have one timeout remaining. I don't think that's enough to uh, keep – Holy Cross from going into victory formation and just taking knees the rest of the way. So this is a must convert. Yeah, they're going to have to get this. It's over. Boy, those Holy Cross, they've been waiting for this matchup for a long, long time. They've had a really great program over the last several years, and they probably have been disappointed they haven't had a shot. Great crowd, the Central Catholic student body great atmosphere i mean it doesn't get any better than this for a high school football game it really really doesn't you know you got a high school that's got you know all boys 600 boys and you got another one that's co-ed that only has about 130 uh, 280, boys yeah yeah in total it is truly david and goliath and, and uh you know it's like notre dame versus boston college was the analogy somebody used but uh david flores from the yeah, yeah it was awesome it's, it's all right here it is fourth down central is two for two on fourth down tonight none bigger than this chavez Scrambles, throws, caught, first down, 45-50 to the 45, goes to Ralva, and the buttons convert. How about that? Again, having real good luck with that crossing right here. Wait for it, wait for it. Here comes across the formation. Great ball on time. A lot of dead space, like we said earlier. Good hit applied, though, at the end of this. They're still playing physical. First down. First down and 10. And there's a man open. Was it a catch? Yes. Sliding to the ground. Yes. A catch by Taralva for the first down. Now, Buttons on the move. Now we see a little hurry up, a little little step in their get along here, Bobby. They're, they're getting set up. As you see, uh, Correa, Correa warming up on the sidelines. As Chavez to throw. Quarterback. Rolls left. Tuck and run. Oh, Big hit at the 23-yard line. 54 seconds to go. We're going down to the wire in the holy ball. He's going to stay down. And he's hurt. He caught it right on the chin right here by uh, Adam De La Garza, Bobby. At big, the end of this run. big hit. Clean hit. It was but a clean Chavez hit. Chavez up off the ground. Watch this collision, folks. Man. That was one that knocked the wind out of him, I'm sure. And Central Catholic. Central Catholic has burned a timeout. That's their final timeout. Now things are getting iffy here. Yeah. You you got to get to the sideline if you're Central Catholic at this point. And you got to leave time to get your field goal unit out there if the clock's running after a, a run play. So you got to be real cognizant. And I know Coach Santiago, he's been around the business a long time. He's 30 plus years in the college ranks. Uh, and NFL, been around the NFL, so they, they know what they're doing in this situation, I'm sure. The Holy Bowl has been an absolute battle. I know the score is only 8-7, and you look at that and you say, a oh, ho-hum. Nothing ho-hum about no. this game. These two teams if have... If you know football and you see what's happening between the lines, man, it, it's been an awesome game to be a part of. Big-time hits, big-time effort, big-time rivalry. And now they got to finish. And so that uh, Nick Chavez is going to stay in the game because they did take the timeout. And it's second and four with no timeouts. Chavez looks, throws, completes. There's a flag down. And inside the 15 goes Karam right where he wheeled off of that uh, route. That's where the flag went. It's going to be on Central Catholic, looks like, here, Bobby. Let's see what the it was the flag was near where the uh, route was run. Holy Cross coaches are saying it's on the on the buttons here. So illegal formation. There you go. Offense. 
five yard penalty, second down. Not enough on the line of scrimmage. On a completed, that would have been a first down. That's a very hurtful penalty. Well, let's think of field goal range here too, Bobby. I don't know the range of uh, Carrido, but. This would be where it at is now, as uh, Gabe mentioned, 45 yards. It would be about 46 from this spot. Passing down for Chavez. Drops back, rush comes, scrambles away from it, but in the middle of the field, he's going to get slammed to the turf. The clock's the running. The clock's running. No timeouts, 35 seconds to go, and it's third down and long. Central's got to hurry. Now they're going to play for the field goal right here probably then. Will they snap it and throw it into the ground here? Yes. They're going to buy one more play or at least some time. I think you still had to. I think you had time to run a play there on third down. Now it's fourth down, and you got to decide whether you let your kicker try to win the game or not. 24 seconds left in this. Judson has defeated Wagner 35-28. Well, they're letting a lot of clock run down. I, they're taking too long to make this decision. Well, they probably should have managed that a little bit better if they're going to kick the field goal here. Let that run down before they spiked it. Play clock is down to 10. They're out of time. So now they're going, oh, they're going backwards. Yeah, not good. Well, will they even get a playoff? Nope. Here comes the penalty flag. Game, offense. Five yard penalty. Fourth down. Well, now you just got to go for broke here if you're Nick Chavez. That was not good clock management by the buttons. Makes it a 51 yard field goal if they kick it right here, Bobby. So, yeah. We talked about that after they called their last time out, how you're going to have to be aware of the fact you got to run the clock after anything running. Fourth and 14. I'm sure they got to play for this. And they're passing and now, they got a timeout. Holy Cross is going to take a timeout. We will keep it here. Don't want to miss any of this. 24 seconds to play in the game. The difference is a two-point conversion by Holy Cross. All of the scoring in this contest coming in the fourth quarter of play. Central Catholic scored on a one-yard quarterback sneak by Nick Chavez on a fourth and goal to make it 7 to nothing with 8.21 to play in the game. But Holy Cross then goes on a nine-play, 62-yard scoring drive. Gibby Salas to Augustine Barrera for the 26-yard touchdown pass. By the way, that was a fourth down play, too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then Lada gets the two-point conversion run. I'll tell you what, I don't think I've ever been around a game that has a better fourth down conversion rate than teams have a third down conversion rate. Uh, they're not afraid to go for it on that fourth down. So, you know, I don't think Coach Santiago's panicking right here at this fourth down and 14. I mean, they're going to, again, that crossing route and the, and the zone defense of Holy Cross, there's holes in it. Uh, you just got to be able to protect the quarterback, and, and Garza's got to be able to be, see, or excuse me, Chavez got to be able to see what he needs to see. And the offense line has to hold up to give Chavez time. They're going to go four wides here. Davids Myers in there probably for extra pass protection. Chavez takes the snap. They rush four, rolls left, and he's going to throw. There's a flag down, ball caught at the 20 yard line, and a first down inside the 15, 10, 5. Into the end zone, Gibby Garza. Touchdown if it stands. It's 33 yards, but there's a flag. Bobby, I think, yeah, we got a holding. Holding. Holding against the buttons here. Man, you got to hate to see that. That was a great, great job getting the ball. Holding offense, number seven. 10-yard penalty, previous fourth down. You hear the Boo Birds. And, I, you know, this one's going to be talked about yeah, for a while. This know. has been a dramatic finish here. I don't know. Uh, in any case, that brings up fourth down to 24. That, a great play call again. Coach Santiago dialed it up, and, and great play that time. But we talked about it. Gibby Garza had to get involved in the offense, and he has. And it was only a three-man rush that time by, uh, by Holy Cross, so it wasn't like they were bringing heat. So now we're going to do fourth down again. What a play. That was a great run by Gibby Garza awesome. after the catch, but all for naught. So now it's fourth and 24. You One look, point lead here for Holy Cross. Look at Holy Cross here back into 3-4, almost a prevent shell here. And it comes down to this play. Chavez, deep drop, pressure comes, sacked. The Holy Cross Knights have done it. 
Elijah Michael coming off the edge. Heck of a game here. Here he comes. Heck of a finish. Right tackle doesn't get a hand and on him. And now they just have to take the knee. What a ball game, Bobby. Central Catholic walking their defense onto the field. And so all they have to do is take a knee, and this thing is over. You know, and it just took a really gutsy call to go for two there. Yeah. Why tie? I mean, I, like and it's I'm, a non-district game. And that's what, you know, Gabe alluded to it, too. I mean, David and Goliath, and you're the underdog. Don't play for the tie, man. Don't play for the tie. You go ahead and take your shot and win it win it outright right now. So There's a, a, a penalty against Holy Cross as they had maybe an excessive celebration. Maybe just a little bit. I probably would excessively celebrate if I just did what they did. What a big win for Holy Cross. This will be their fourth straight over Central Catholic and the first time they played in five years. Dead ball, unsportsmanlike, defense number 27, 15 yards, first down. Well, that's on Central Catholic, actually. They're pointing it off against the buttons. One more time, the Knights will take a knee. Again, coming up sports tonight at 10, we'll try to get to our coach interview and also our player of the game interview that's coming up right as we close and lead into the 10 o'clock hour. What a tremendous game this was. The Holy Cross Knights now in victory formation. One more knee and that does it. We'll break it. 8-7, Holy Cross wins it. You're watching. The High School Football Showcase presented by John Wayne Service Company on KCWX-TV. Welcome back here to Alamo Stadium. Bobby Stotzenberger, Andy Skelton, and Gabe Farias. We have uh, witnessed a classic here, an 8-7 game, but this was as exciting as it gets for an 8-7 contest. A lot of... All right, Coach Mike Harrison down on the field right now, right. the victorious Holy Cross coach. coach. Yeah, we got Coach Mike Harrison. I got one word for you, amigo. Wow, what a yeah. great win for you guys. Uh, great football game. Kids fought hard. You know, we gave up that touchdown after the punt muff, and uh, to see him rally like that and play that hard, it's just great feelings, Coach, to see your kids play with that kind of effort and intensity. Coach, what went into the decision to go for two we in a game? game? We were going to win the game. That was it. Period. We were going to go for the win. Coach, congratulations Thank on you. being the Holy Bowl winner. Appreciate you. Thank you. All right, guys, Mike Harrison, uh, what a fantastic finish to the nice 2018 Holy Bowl. Guys, back to you. All righty. As uh, the Holy Bowl 47 version won by the Holy Cross Knights. We hope to get our John Wayne Service Company player of the game, and we're going to go ahead and announce him now, Ethan Lada. What a fantastic performance by him. Tell you what, Ethan Lara is only, people don't realize he's only five foot six and about 175 pounds, but he runs like a 230, 240 pound running back. If you watch how he ran tonight, his second and third effort, and how he finished his runs. Every time, especially the most important run of the night, that two-point conversion, he flat ran over the play side linebacker uh, and rocked his world to get in the end zone, Bobby. Great uh, show of uh, unity here between these two teams. You know, they did, they went to mass together last <laughs> night. So, you know what? This is just as good as it gets. Uh, they pray together. They play against each other. They pray together again. And at the end of the day, it's what And it's look all at about. the two head coaches yep. there. 
right in the middle of it, leading the way. And that's what it's all about. At the end of the day, you play guts out, then you, you celebrate together and fellowship together. Ethan Lada will be our John Wayne player of the game, the Holy Cross Knight. And uh, we take a look at his numbers. Not a lot of offense tonight total for the uh, either team, but what a workhorse by Lada. 18 carries, 80 yards. He had the two-point conversion run, and I think that was the story of the game. And he kept the 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 uh, Knights in the contest by just churning out some yardage. Well, and that's what Coach Harrison alluded to in his halftime interview with Gabe on the sideline. Hey, we got to be able to run run the football, and they did. They came out and they did. All right, here we go with our John Wayne Service Company Player of the Game. Guys, I, guys, I've got Ethan Lada here with me. Our John Wayne Service player of the game ethan talk about your emotions right now i know what rivalries are like i played in a lot of frontier bowls this was one of the best holy bowls i've ever seen what's going through your mind right now i'm super excited uh the first half i was a little scared i was nervous there was a lot of talking going i didn't want one of my boys to go out we went into halftime and we told our boys you know you gotta calm down uh we knew it was gonna be like this we knew it was gonna be like this um I'm just, I'm excited. I've never been a part of it. I've been here since sixth grade. Seen two of them, and then it stopped. And the win my senior year is awesome. Talk about that touchdown, buddy. Uh, Two-point conversion. I don't know. Um, I knew if I didn't get in, it was over. So I went, and my, my big boys made a hole, and I went with it. My, my linemen are the players of the game tonight. Okay, one final question. I saw the camaraderie. I know that you guys were enemies on the field friends off of the field talk about how faith has really brought you guys together even though they were them and you were you talk about how you guys came together at the end well all of our christian service that that like this even with christian service meeting and being friends while uh, no one gets seriously hurt and let us come together like this and nothing happened in the center. That's that's good. It's all good. Congratulations, buddy, on being the player jacket, of the game and for okay. winning the Holy Bowl. Jacket, yes, sir, thank okay. you. All right, guys, there you go. That's it from uh, down here on the sideline. A fantastic game. Uh, uh, an 8-7 victory for the Holy Cross Knights for the 2018 Holy Bowl. Back to you guys. All right, Gabe, thank you very much. Uh, what a great contest this was. You, you couldn't be much more pleased uh, as a coach watching these two teams perform because at the end of the day andy what you want from your football team is to give everything that they have and at the end of the game if they gave everything they have what else can you ask for from the young men i'll tell you what again it was an eight to seven score bobby and, and you know the fact of the matter is who really cares what the score is as long as you have one point at the end but even hats off to coach santiago and his guys man they played they played their guts out I have not seen a game like that in, in a very long time where it came down to the end and it was a, just a, a slug match. And at the end of it, we saw there at the end that they got together, they prayed together. Uh, and that's what life should be about. We should compete and we should love one another when it's all said and done. Uh, for Coach Mike Santiago and the Central Catholic Buttons, this will be maybe the one that got away. They had their chances. They can't say they didn't have their chances, but they turned it over in the red zone twice. They did score the third time, but it wasn't enough. Right, and then they had that penalty at the end there uh, when they scored, you know. Uh, but there was a lot of penalties in this game, too, and we can go back to the first half. So you can't really pick just one play that really cost a game uh, because it would have been a different outcome late in the game. But, uh, yeah, no doubt that Coach Santiago is going to look at this one, and, and that's one that kind of got away. Well, Lada, our player of the game, and you saw him down on the field with Gabe. He is a rolling ball of muscle. I, lo I love that kid, man. You see how yoked up he was? He's only five foot six, but you see how he ran the football. Shoulder pads were low, and he was physical. And like he said, I, he gave it to his offensive line. I thought that was a class act on his part. He knew who got him there, and uh, he knew if he didn't get in, you know, he could have been the GOAT and not the hero, you know. So, But he uh, finished that he run. He did. He finished it. We're, uh, hopefully we can see a replay here of it. He, he finished it in a real big way. All right, folks, next week it's Wagner versus Sam Houston right here from Alamo Stadium in the district opener. We will have a lot of fun with that one. We've had a great time with this one. The 47th Holy Bowl goes to the Holy Cross Knights. They win it 8-7 to seven over Central Catholic. And Stick around. Quick, for, yes, I sir. want to give a shout-out to the class of 1977 Holy Cross. I said I would if they won, so congratulations. All right. Shout-out <laughs> to you guys. Celebrate. Enjoy the victory.
Holy Cross Night. Sports Tonight is next. We thank you for joining us, and we'll see you again next week for more High School Football Showcase presented by John Wayne Service Company here on KCWX. Good night, everyone.